to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob, and today we're going to be playing a solo playthrough of Lost Runes of Arnak, published by CGE. Hello, everyone joining live. Welcome, welcome. Hello to those joining later. I appreciate it. Oh, let's see. <laughs> oh, Matuj, I saw your message. I see you redacted it. I see. Well, uh, so Matuj, uh, for those that don't know or have heard me say the name, uh, been around for a little while on the channel, joining us in the chat. Uh, yes, I did check, Matouche. I did check. <laughs> so Matouche said, check the playtesters in the book, and he winked. And when he said it, I still happened to have the PDF open, just double-checking the solo rules. So I scrolled up a couple pages, uh, and we can see it right here on the right of your screen. There's Matouj in the chat as one of the, looks like, 40,000 playtesters that he had for this game. Uh, which is always a good sign to see, like, an endless list of playtesters. So if anyone has any complaints on the balance of the game, or anything with the game at all, even, like cover art, anything, uh, you can totally blame Matouj in the chat and vent towards Matouj, you know, call him names, whatever you got to do. Uh, we'll just blame everything on Matouj while, while he's here in chat. So... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, thanks for playtesting this, Matouche. <laughs> you know me too well. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Matouche is from the Czech Republic, so anytime I play a any Czech game, uh, anything, he's, he shows up in support, which, which I, I could totally appreciate. Um, I'm a proud Canadian. I make sure to, you know, mention when, you know, like, let's say the halftime act of the Super Bowl is a Canadian and the first time ever it's they're by themselves a solo performer is Canadian at the U.S. you know Super Bowl it's kind of you know like a little proud moment <laughs> so things like that I totally understand uh, low volume oh am I low volume that says oh you're right what did I do hold on that's hello what is happening Sorry guys, one sec. Uh, good old Windows update. Hmm. All right, one sec, just checking volumes. The fun of live streams, like 16 spots where volumes are set. And oh, that one's right. Usually, like the one of the Windows ones will reset. Uh, I'm plugged in. Okay, one sec. I'm just gonna unplug things and plug them back in. One sec. All right, we're back. How's it, how does it sound now? Be okay. Should be okay. All right, we look better. I bumped uh, a slider on the mixer board. My bad. Uh, but yeah, plugging it back in. Uh, unplugging and plug it back in. Typical IT response, yes. It, like, solves quite a few problems. Especially with, like, mic cables. Uh, you know, when you I plug them in and out every time between streams, right? I disconnect my mic and, you know, plugging it back in, sometimes the connection doesn't, like, you know, fully connect sometimes. And you're deaf now. Oh man, is it that loud? Test, test. Sorry. Or reboot three times. <laughs> yeah, rebooting. I don't want to reboot because of stream, but I guess I could have rebooted the mixer board and still could have kept streaming, but. But yeah, it should be good now. Volumes look good. Or control, alt, delete. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh... 
Thank you, everyone, for pointing that out. But uh, yeah, if you couldn't hear me, Matuj in the chat, play tester. Yeah, make sure if you have any issues with the game, direct them at Matuj, who's in the chat, who's in the credits for the play testers that I just showed you. Uh, yeah, blame him for everything, including cover art, graphic design on cards, you know, luck of your card draw, uh, the color of the meeples, shape of the meeples, any, anything like that. Anything you want to complain about, uh, blame it fully on him. Format C. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> That'll get you started over. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the the web dev one. Yes, have you closed your browser window? And and not only just close your browser window, but the thing is now with browsers opening like twenty seven instances of the browser in in you know in uh, task manager or whatever in the processes, uh, you got to make sure they not just close the one window or one tab. They have to kill all instances, especially with Chrome with all like the plugins and stuff running in the system tray and things like that. Yeah, yeah, you got to make sure. <laughs> Pseudo RM. I'm not the best with uh, uh, Unix or Linux. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know what that is. I feel like you're changing file permissions. But I'm not 100% sure. Anyways, all right. Alt F4 to decrease volume. Yeah. <laughs> Graham's here. All right, we can get started. So what we're doing today is playing solo. Uh, Lost Runes of Arnak. We played it last night on the channel in a two-player game um, with my wife Mel. It was fun. Um, Mel won, so we can just forget about that stream, I guess. Uh, but today we're playing solo. We're going to take on the AI. I'll show you how quickly how the AI works. I'm not really going to explain too much about the game. There's lots of videos out there teaching you how to play this game, reviewing the game, describing the overview of the game. You'll just basically see it here as we play through it. It'll all make sense. I'll describe it very quickly, and then we'll we'll maybe go into a little detail on the solo um so that you guys can follow along but yeah but i think that's it uh before we get into it some other things thank you to our patreons if you're interested in supporting the channel uh hence why this game is on the channel this was not provided to me uh by the publisher or anything not being paid for this video to play this all the thoughts in this video are my own uh but it was added to the collection thanks to recommendations from our patreons and through their support uh we were able to bring this game to the channel so i just want to put that out there sometimes we get games from publishers uh, I like to say that usually, but I never usually say when we don't get it from publishers. Uh, but I just want to be clear, because we have gotten games from CGE before, but this is not. So I got this game based on your guys' recommendations and my love for deck building and worker placement. I want to try a game that joins those together. So uh, that's that was my draw to this game, and I'm glad I got it. I'm definitely glad I got it. I do like this game. Uh, all right, let's do it. Uh Okay, <laughs> Drew. Oh, Drew, I was gonna talk about that. <laughs> I was gonna, I'm gonna talk about that. Okay. Uh, so the setup looks similar. It's a two-player game. You do follow the two-player setup, uh, which I do have to finish here. I'm just uh, was in the process of doing this before the stream went live. So we're gonna put some random tiles out on the spots that uh, are okay for two players, but we skip all the ones that are for four and three players. It'll tell you. I think that's it. Uh, and then up here we're going to put two random tiles face down that you can pick from if you reach the top of the little track here. We'll just get rid of these out of the way. I set up the idols randomly on the board. I've set up the tiles now randomly. We have our, our Lost Runes Arnak tiles here. The cards I've shuffled. Oops. And I've shuffled the tile stacks here. We will put uh, an artifact, sorry, artifact into play it is a sundial so you can get two tablets out of it when you when you purchase it or you can pass your turn to gain a jewel and on future plays you'd have to play a tablet to get two tablets uh that's a little weird okay but it's cheap it's a cheap artifact which sometimes what you want to get that airplane for travel eh. i'm dropping cards all over the place uh, but yeah, so this is a worker placement, uh, deck building game, a little bit of deck building, a little bit of worker placement, not too heavy in either. It's a good little mesh, uh, merging of the two. Uh, it's basically a point race. It's a point race competitive game, which you can play solo, but the AI, like, like most solo games or like most games that are kind of like this with a little engine building, um, and, and point race Euro type games, the AI just tries to simulate how the opponent would be affecting you. So in a worker placement game, usually the AI is going to be just like plopping meeples on spots, taking up spots, similar to how 
uh, another player would do it. Uh, this is going to simulate, I think like they're trying to simulate a four player game because the AI actually uses six meeples, all the rest of the meeples in the box are going to be jumping all over the board here, covering up spots I'm trying to get to and discovering sites. Uh, they get only one um, token to race up this uh, research track here. Uh, and that'll just help them determine what their score is. It also helps knock some of these tiles away as they're the first ones to get to those spaces. Um, and they can eventually get some of these if, if that's what happens with the AI uh, if they're shooting up the track. Let's check out our items we're going to get from left to right. We got a tent. Activate a site you occupy. If it's a level 2 site, you must first pay two compasses. I don't think I've ever seen that one before. Huh. Okay, what else we got here? Well, we got a watch. For a free action, you can get two gold, or you can pass to gain three. So you basically end your round. I don't, I don't like those pass ones, unless you like kind of have it at the end of your turn as like your last thing you're doing. Um, and you've already exhausted all your other cards and resources. We got a lantern. Activate any of the, I guess, like level zero, like camping sites down here. These lower level dig sites. Uh, a gold pan. So just straight up two gold, a couple ships there on the top left of the card for travel. And we got a good old hot air balloon. Exile this card to go digging with a discount of one airplane. If you discover a new site, you also have a discount of three. Well, that's similar to that airplane we saw yesterday, but uh, yeah, that's cool. Okay, good to know. Um, what else? We need to shuffle up these guys. I'll do that without looking. These are our assistants that can give us abilities. Shuffle them and then they go into uh, three piles of four. Oops. One. So we have that captain that uh, can give you a compass or a ship on the top of the stack. And, oh, we have the card draw dude. That we saw yesterday that was a little buried oh man feels like all the ones i played with yesterday <laughs> oh well whatever <laughs> we'll get one of them off the top maybe we'll see something cool underneath they're fine they're fine um okay um we have our starting deck the same you start with two fear cards and then the four generic cards here to give you gold compasses and some cars and boats for travel. Uh, and we'll throw that down for our starting deck. So for the AI, uh, they start on, you just grab a player board and you flip it to the other side. So I just grabbed the one Mel was using yesterday. Uh, any other player board you flip to the other side, they all have this gray AI board on it. And this is where they'll keep their tiles, AKA like they're basically like cards in any other game, uh, but it's a deck of tiles that'll tell you what their AI function are. It's got a deck and a discard pile. This is where their um, their uh, guardians go face down after they uh, defeat a guardian. They'll just get them for points. Uh, and this is where all the cards go that they uh, purchase or take away from the, the row here. Uh, and they just pile up there for counting for score at the end of the game. The AI doesn't use resources. They don't collect gold, compasses, jewels, and none of that stuff. Uh, they just do whatever they want, and they're literally collecting guardians for points, cards for points, and also idols. So as they gather each kind of idol, uh, so for example, if they get this compass one, the first one they get, they put it here, worth three points at the end of the game. But once they have that compass or any of these types, any other ones they get of the same type or face down one goes over here, and anything in this face down pile is minus one point uh at, at the end when you're counting score kind of to symbolize the same way we uh get a whole bunch of idols and we eventually slide them over here for free actions uh to do these actions here we'll lose out on some of these points so the more idols they take it kind of simulates the more likely they're going to use them to reduce the points they're earning i assume that's what it's doing um but that's ai and then at the end you just total up like all the cards they've taken the guardians they've taken all the idols they've taken there's one other thing i think that might be it actually it. Check the scoring for the solo. Yeah, scoring on the right there, the rival expedition scores points for the position on the magnif oh the magnifying glass, yeah, up the research track also. I forgot about that. Guardians, cards purchased, and then the idol track. So basically four ways they're gaining points. Yeah, research, Brian. That's what I forgot. I knew I forgot something. Um 
So yeah, they have this little research token. This is just going to track where they're shooting up this track, and we just check, we just check where the magnifying glass is. Not like when you're playing, you check where you also have your journal. I think um, this they only use one token. So we're just going to put that on their board for now. Again, uh, like I explained yesterday, I am zoomed in kind of on the board right now. I've cut off, you know, four, five, six inches off the top uh, where it's just decks and discard piles. And I'm also not using this resource board that does look pretty. It's nice to have it on the board and all, but I just use containers uh, anyway, use containers for things. Uh, and I just spread my decks of tiles and cards just to the left and right, just to fit it on video to kind of zoom in a little better. Cause this like is a, is a table hog, it's a giant board. Which doesn't look bad. It's it's functional, but it's just like yeah, I, yeah. I don't know if it was needed. Anyways, all right. Um, what else do we need? Oh, the AI always goes first. I just threw this here. You don't really need to use this, obviously, but I just put it there to remind me that uh, the AI always goes first all five rounds of the game. Uh, and here's the AI's uh, deck of tiles. So they give you tiles instead of cards. Most games give you cards. They they give you tiles. Uh, the basic actions, this literally just tells you take any one of the workers, they get six workers, uh, and throw it on a spot that gives out tablets. So it will go from the highest to lowest too. So if we've opened a secondary site that has tablets on it, and it's and it's there available, the worker will go there. If not, it looks here, and it, it just goes like down. So at the start of the game, obviously one of the only spots going to go is here. It would just cover this spot with the tablets. We're playing the two player, so we've we've covered up all the... Uh, the spots that have two boots for travel. Uh, and it has the same thing for jewels, same thing for arrowheads, same thing for compasses, and same thing for gold. You always play with these five basic cards. We are going to build a, a deck of ten behaviors, okay? Uh, so you always have to put these ones in. Then you can put all five of these green ones in, and you have a complete deck of ten behaviors. Uh, so... That's easy mode. That's level zero. That's the, the easiest difficulty. It's the only one I've played on. I've played this game once and I kind of destroyed the AI. So I'm going to, I'm going to put it up to difficulty levels just to show how, how that works. Um, I don't know if that's still too easy or maybe too hard. It depends, I guess, what I see and you know, how I get my little engine going and choices I make, but maybe I just got a little lucky that one. Um, but, uh, these actions all do a specific thing and there is a counterpart to each one that's red, that it is a little more aggressive. So what you do to get your difficulty, and we can go over what these are actually first. Uh, so this just tells you based on the round, they're going to go explore, a, uh, discover a new site. So they'll discover a level one site for the first three rounds, and then a level two site in the fourth round, and do nothing in level in round five. And they'll actually get a guardian in only rounds two and three. You do not put a guardian out unless the guardian symbol's on there. So it kind of symbolizes like the other players dealing with guardians, and they're you know sometimes they're there at the end of the turn, sometimes they're not. Uh, so that's one. This one just says they basically shoot up the research track one space without paying anything, resources or anything. Then they take um, uh, an assistant off the tallest stack and discard it. And in round five, this will do nothing. Okay. And there's some rules to how do they decide which stack if two are the tallest. On the back of these tiles, you'll see when I put them on their board, uh, they use this little arrow as a tiebreaker. Either you go for the leftmost or rightmost to break any ties. You'll see it's very elegant and it works. Um, this one, he'll just, they'll grab the item with the lowest value. And again, uh, you know, their deck and discard will look like this. So in this case, it would take the, uh, item with the lowest point value. So I see a one, a one and a one and a two here is obviously not the lowest. So out of those ones, it will take the left most. If the deck had a uh, arrow pointing to the left on top of it, that's how you quickly decide super fast. I like it. It's very, very smart. Um, and then. This one says they defeat a guardian, and that's assuming it's a guardian at a space with a worker. And the same as um, the dig works, they'll go from top to bottom. So they'll try to defeat a guardian up here if they have a worker, and then this row, then this row, then the bottom. Okay. Uh, if there is no guardian to defeat, they will then do the research action, but not doing the uh, assistant, obviously, because that symbol's not there. And if it's round five, they do nothing. And as you guessed, this one uh, is exist to just to get rid of the artifact with the lowest point value. So for each of these green ones, there is a red one that's a little more aggressive. So this one in round five, they're going for a uh, level two site. And the guardians, I think, are lined up a little different. Uh, this one, they're actually going for the highest item victory point. So they're a little more aggressive to get more points. Uh, this one is the same, except for they also... 
yeah, in round five, they still, they still um, do this. And then this one is uh, grab the highest total or highest point total um, artifact. And then this one, they just any single round. So remember the other one, basically the easier version says, you know, round five, just chill, man. You don't have to do this. This one says, ah, I don't care what round it is. Uh, we're going to be messing with you. So what we're going to do to build the deck, since we're starting on level two difficulty instead of zero or one, you know, all the way up to five, you just shuffle these. <laughs> uh, you guys are funny. All right, uh, so we're gonna take two of these at random and just shuffle them up and we're gonna see what we get. So it looks like the AI is gonna be a little more aggressive on getting rid of guardians or researching and knocking assistance away, I guess. So what we do is we take these, the rest of the red ones, we throw them aside. And then we take the equivalent of the green and we remove those from the game. So you always have 10 tiles in your AI's deck, no matter which difficulty, and then you shuffle it with those base ones. So this is uh, your AI deck of tiles built. So we'll just do a little shuffling here, mixing it up. And that'll get reset and shuffled every round. And if you pass early, even if you're done your turn uh, for the round, you're passed for the round, they will still go through all 10 tiles and do them no matter what's happening. Obviously, if some of them have uh, come up and there's no worker at a guardian and that kind of thing, they will skip certain symbols and sometimes do nothing on their turn also. So um, it's very elegant, very simple, very quick. I, I love AI that's just like, you know, you don't have to know like six other pages of variant rules. This has two pages of variant rules, uh, which is not bad. It just literally explains these symbols. It's super straightforward and you're always going second and then slightly modified scoring. But it's like so basic, so quick. I just like when the AI doesn't add to you having to learn a ton of extra stuff for a game and kind of forget rules or modify rules and you have to decipher like tons of text. This is literally a look at it and you know the symbol as long as you understand what the symbol's doing. It's, it's super quick, I love it. So this just goes on their board here, like so, okay. Um, what else? I think we're good, right? I, I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna draw my five cards. Four and five. And feel free to play along. Feel free to, uh, in the chat, recommend something to do here. Um, to purchase based on cards, suggest things, you know, maybe, maybe you see a card up here that I should to take to start off my strategy or like, uh, should I ignore the cards? Like, is there a certain, uh, should I be running up the research track based on what you see? Or is there a certain assistant I should be rushing for that you see anything like that? Um, feel free to throw recommendations in the chat. We can, you play along, um, and we'll try to beat this AI. Uh, that's all. <laughs> if we don't, as long as you want to see how the game works solo, and it makes sense, well, that's a win in my book. Uh, Brian and V is saying, recommendation table flip. Uh, so should I, based on this setup, just flip the table and start over? And we'll start in about an hour and a half after I unflip the table and put everything back on and sort it out? <laughs> All right, uh, I'm gonna catch up on chat though. I, I see it's flying, but a lot of people mentioning each other and having chats between themselves. So sometimes I miss people asking me things specifically, but I see Matuj is asking questions here. Uh, let me see if I can answer some of these. Oh, where are we? Rob, have you checked the other side of the board? Uh, I haven't looked. I know it exists, obviously, from reading the rules. There's a serpent side of the board. This is like the falcon board. There's like different art on the other side of the board. Uh, it looks cool. I don't know how it's different, though. I skipped over that page in the rule book because I was like, I'm not playing with that yet. Um, and you can play that solo, right? I think that's in the solo. But I have not checked, but uh, for those interested, we didn't, yeah, we should have talked about that yesterday, actually. I never mentioned there's a whole other side to the board. But, yeah, there's uh, this, I won't flip it, obviously, because we set it all up, but the other side's the Snake Temple side. And the Snake Temple has sites with different travel costs and different research track. And there you see it there, it's got, um, yeah, that's cool. Okay, different travel costs and different research track. But other than that, it's the same? I don't know. 
Oh, you can rescue assistance. Oh, and then you have to pay an idol to advance somewhere on the research track at the bottom left there. Oh, and you can gain fear cards on the magnifying glass. Ah, uh, okay. Is it just harder? Is this one like more difficult or just different? But yeah, it looks like uh, assistance can go on the board. A little, little, a little different, but it's just got one page of rules to kind of tell you how it works. So it can't be that bad. Uh, but in the solo rules, it has a spot here, I think. Well, maybe it doesn't. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe the solo side just works the same. I don't know. Maybe you can't play solo on that board. Uh, and Matuj, it's not a random question. You ask that question basically every time you come around. Uh, I, will you be playing the new Aeon's End? <laughs> I don't know what the new Aeon's End is. We have Outcasts. I don't know if there's another one on Kickstarter already, which they seem to have a new Kickstarter going as soon as another one releases. So uh, I don't know if you mean like there's a newer one because I haven't been paying attention. I don't know if there's a newer one. But yes, Mel and I were already talking about that. We were going to start it this weekend, but we decided to push it. We want to finish... Uh, Sword and Sorcery first. So this weekend we have streams for Sword and Sorcery. We're starting Arkham Horror, Dunwich Legacy, and we're continuing through uh, Cthulhu the Death May Die with episode 3. So that's what we're focused on this weekend, but we'll eventually work Aeon's End into there. It just didn't do too well on one of our Patreon polls. Uh, it did okay, but there were just other games that we need to play before that, like Spirit Island. Uh, I want to get some of that to the channel first before I touch Aeon's End, probably. But we'll see. Uh, but Mel has more time available, so we're going to get her Back to the channel to help us. I don't want to play Aeon's End Outcasts until I played through it with her, uh, going through the campaign in it. Um, but yeah, but there's plans. Then I'll play some of it solo and stuff too. But uh, yeah. No, Brian, you're not supposed to be talking about the game. No, no, no. You can chat about whatever in the chat. I'm only. I was only joking. Uh, if I was saying like, you know, you guys are not, you know, whatever. No, no, hang out, talk about whatever. Uh, talk about the game, talk about anything. Uh, chill in the chat, whatever. Don't be a jerk and you're fine. <laughs> or at least don't be a jerk to each other. <laughs> Dan says, Matuj, not only has he not checked the other side of the board, he has thrown some of the board away. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> is there supposed to be a new Kickstarter for Aeon's End this month? Oh, there is supposed to be a new end. I knew it, Daniel. It's, it's clockwork. A lot of these companies, as soon as they start delivering a Kickstarter, they already have the other Kickstarter like ready to, to like start funding, you know? Like like they want to, they already moved on. Like it's in retail or it's, it's you know, it's being delivered. Now they just want like, now, now that you got that, we need more of your money to fund the next project. It, it just makes sense. Um, so it's just expected at this point. Aeon's End just has a new one coming out as soon as the other one delivers. Uh, not as soon, but they wait a little bit. But All right. <laughs> oh, and especially talk about how good pineapple is on pizza. That's totally fine. Because <laughs> it's awesome. All right. Uh, okay. Let's get playing. So we have uh, the AI is going to go first and they literally just flip a tile and they're going to put a worker on the highest located location that has a tablet on it. And we'll just grab any worker and that is right here. So now if I want to go for those two tablets, no tablets for me. No tablets for me. Well, speaking of proud Canadians, so Hawaiian pizza was invented in Southern Ontario, Canada, not too far from here. Uh, so yeah, I'm proud proud to uh, to be part of the uh, Hawaiian pineapple on pizza squad. <laughs> Anyways, yes, Hawaiian pizza was invented in, in Canada by a Canadian <laughs> in the 1960s. There you go. There's some information for you. All right. Uh, so what do we want to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? I have a couple fear cards. There's something we want to grab. Do we want to like try to race up the research track today? I feel like that's a thing. Uh, is there a card here? Mm hmm. I only have one gold, but I mean this watch. 
This watch wouldn't be a bad grab, right? It, it would gain a bunch of gold. Like, it's very early, so grabbing this card could lead to, like, quite a bit of gold for the rest of the game. That's how I look at that. Like, certain cards buying them early versus late. Like, if I saw that one late in the game, maybe wouldn't care. Uh, I guess the... I don't know, in this case, I'd probably maybe get the gold pan, actually, because of the, uh, the two boats on it in the top left. The, uh, the watch only has one boat, and I don't really care about that pass ability. Guardian. <laughs> That's correct, Drew. It wasn't invented in Hawaii. I know, it's it's weird. <laughs> Google that. Oh no, you eat the poutine on the side of the Hawaiian pizza slice you're eating. You don't have to you don't have to combine them fully together. You combine them in your belly. <laughs> All right, uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Kill Guardian, says Jim. I don't even have any Guardians. Do you want me to discover sites first? Or I should focus on killing Guardians and not just <laughs> let them destroy me like previous games? I, d I don't value the Guardians that high. I, I don't care about getting a couple fear cards, but then I end up wasting my time trying to get rid of these cards out of my deck instead of doing other things. So yeah, I'll try to deal with the Guardians as I see them. So that means I should be discovering sites earlier in my turn, so I might have the resources to get rid of them, or at least know what resources I need. So based on that, I need three compasses. I do have two here in hand I can generate. Uh, then I can put a worker. Uh, I can go to a spot with a boat. It's basically what I see here for, for my start, to discover a new site. So I go to one of these four sites. Uh, I obviously don't want to go here to upgrade a tablet uh, to a arrowhead or an arrowhead to a jewel because I don't have any of those resources. So I could probably go to one of these spots here instead of one of these two to get a tablet. So I'll roll with that. Guardians are 60 victory points if you kill them all. You can do that? I, are you sure there's enough spaces to even get them all? 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, okay, okay. And do they only give you 12 or they're extra? Maybe there's, I guess it wouldn't matter because you'd never put more than 12 on the board. I don't think there's a way, a card that can help you get more, but I don't know all the cards, so who knows? Okay, let's try to kill, let's discover every single site and kill every guardian. We'll make that our goal. I don't think, I don't know if that's possible, but <laughs> okay. We probably need to see some cards then that help us kill guardians also, and I don't see any, so part of me wants to ignore that. Uh, okay. So let's play these two cards for two compasses, and then we'll spend a compass. Uh, and that's going to help us travel up to, we'll say, here. Uh, we got to spend a boat. Okay, we spent a boat. And then we're going to take a tablet. And we're going to put this over here. Okay. And we got to remember what the AI is going to do. The AI is going to start taking all these spots. So maybe I should have gone down here first to grab anything I needed. Uh, but hopefully I see what's here and I get something that will help me with the Guardian. We're going to go with a level 1 site. Uh, so I get a compass and an arrowhead. Okay. And we get a Guardian. It's the red, red Tiger. Whatever that is. Um, so we need two compasses and arrowhead. Well, I got rid of all my compasses, so maybe I can go down here and get a compass. And that's got the extra boat action on it. All right, so that's my main action. Uh, let's see what the AI is going to do. Oh, he's going to block the compasses. No! <laughs> that's where I wanted to go. The arrows. Tablets are good for reusing those artifacts. Ah, true. True. Hmm. Okay. So I could use this to get a compass to then defeat this guy. Or, I, like I would normally do in the game, I would ignore this guardian for now. And I would probably use my uh, tablet and arrowhead to just start doing some research. Probably where I'd go, but 
I could use this to gain a gold and a compass, and then I would have enough to conquer the guardian. I don't know, what do you guys think? What do you think in the chat? I, I feel like going up the research track, but I, I mean, I want, I gotta try something new. I normally ignore guardians early in the game and just don't care, but then I'm loaded with fear cards. So I, I'm gonna go with Jim's recommendation. I think I'm gonna ignore that. No worries, Daniel. Thank you so much. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day. Kill it. Okay. So then I'm going to free action, uh, use my idol to gain a goal and a compass. And then as my action for the turn, I'm going to my main action. And the arrowhead two compasses, and we're going to kill the guardian. So we have this guardian over here for a boat icon once per game if we when we need it. Okay, so remember that that's there. Now the AI is oh, it's looking to conquer a guardian on a space where it has a worker. It doesn't have any, so it's going to start on the research track, uh, and it will start on the rightmost side, uh, this side. Okay, so it now has one victory point from the research track down here in the bottom right. Okay, back to our turn. Sacabra, hey. Uh, Guardian. Well, Drew's saying, I found it quite difficult to get the bot at research. It helps get some... Oh, okay. Uh, all right, our turn. We just have these sphere cards. We have one worker left. There's something we want to grab. I mean, I could go for a jewel. Uh, that would be nice. And then maybe we can go on this spot here. Otherwise, an arrowhead, two gold. It's all we're really doing, I think. Um, or we could buy cards. Let's let's buy a card, I think. Let's buy a card before the AI starts taking away cards. So I, I can afford the gold pan or the watch. And I'm thinking of the gold pan because it's got the two boats on it versus one boat, so that's just more flexible later in the game when I'm trying to uh, dig or discover uh, new sites at the top here. We could afford the hot air balloon, which will help us discover a site, but it's an exile, so it leaves our deck. But it could help us get a level two site a lot faster. So I, I don't know, what do you guys think? Take the ruby and move on the track, says Scott. Okay, okay. And Dan says, and don't forget to click your heels three times when you do it. Yes, take the ruby slippers. All right, uh, so we'll spend a boot on the top of this card to go to the ruby spot. Then we gotta take a card out of hand, put it in our discard pile here, or in our play area, uh, ignoring the effect. There is no effect anyway. And then we take a jewel. Okay, now the AI will go. And they're gonna cover up the gold spot with a worker. Boom. Okay, our turn. We said we're going to spend the ruby. Uh, and we got to do our magnifying glass first. We'll go up here. Then we get a gold, which gives us more gold to possibly buy different cards, which is interesting. Uh, all right, the AI is going to go. And ha ha! They were going to try to cover the ruby spot, but they can't, so they literally do nothing. There is no other spot with rubies on them or jewels uh, that they can cover. And now it's our turn. So Jim's saying, then buy the far right item. So the hot air balloon, a hot air balloon, so we can exile to try to discover a different site. That'll help us get guardians quicker, right? If we're really doing that. <laughs> All right, I'm doing it. Speak now, forever hold your peace. Although, <laughs> man, that gold pan. <laughs> oh, we could buy the watch still also, if it's still available, because it only costs one gold. So we could buy that too. Uh, but let's get the hot air balloon in there first because it goes to the bottom of our deck. So I, I think we'll see anything anyway because we only have one card there. Uh, so we're going to buy the hot air balloon. Put that on the bottom of our deck. Draw a new card. Oh, the airplane. Man, we could go crazy with discovering if we can afford this eventually. Hopefully it doesn't go away. It shouldn't, right? Because they didn't get the card. They didn't get this. This would have be buying the highest point card in the row. And this is a three, so their card's always going to go for the lowest point card in the row. So we can try to play to that and manipulate it if we can. But we shouldn't have to worry about that, it'll be there for a bit. But the quicker we get that card, the better. 
Uh, but we'll see. It's four gold. I don't know if we'll ever be able to afford it. But if we buy the watch, might be able to do that. Okay, so the AI is going to go. And they're going to grab the artifact with the lowest points. It's round one, so there literally is only one artifact. And they just take the card, put it here for scoring later. And we ignore all the effects on it. And we found the hunting arrows. Four compasses, you gain a fear card, two arrowheads. I like that one. That one's cool. Okay, our turn. We have a tablet, a gold, and an empty hand. I think we're buying the watch. Or the pan. I don't know which one. I, I want to hear your suggestions in the chat. What do you guys vote? I buy. I feel like the pan, I mean, I mean, I may pass at the end of my turn one time, hold the watch till the end, but I'll probably want that gold like at the start of my turn anyway when I have the card. So I feel like the gold pan based on these two resources versus one. Am I wrong? They're both worth the same victory points at the end of the game. Gold pan or watch? Let me know in the chat what you think I should grab. I'm feeling gold pan, but I could be sold either way. But I, on I only have one gold, sir. The pan? The pan it is. That's easy. And it is. And obviously, yeah, more flexible, right? That's what I'm thinking. I, I like this, I kind of don't care as much. Like that's not that big a deal. But I just know myself how I play. I, I'm gonna be just as soon as I get this card, I'm tossing it for gold right away. I don't want to hold it for three gold at the end of my turn. That seems kind of weird. Or passing early. No, that's never gonna happen. Alright. So we'll get the gold pan, we're going to throw it on the bottom. But I mean, if you only saw the watch in the game, that's still not bad either. If it's still there, I, I, I might still buy that one eventually. Uh, so we'll slide the airplane over. Oh, but not when we see the hat. Oh, I wish the hat was there. I would have bought this instead. <laughs> uh, getting that compass is all good. Maybe we can grab that if it doesn't go away from the AI. Yeah, <laughs> we're trying to buy this, we'll try to buy that, we'll try to buy this. <laughs> so many good cards, I feel, are coming up this time. I will see. There are a lot of good cards, though. Oh, is it flipped? Uh, yeah, it is flipped, and it is on purpose. It's usually because of the way Mel sits on one side, and it's flipped from how the table is, just so, you know, when Mel's reaching over here. But yeah, I guess it doesn't matter when I'm here by myself. I don't know. It kind of so the arm lines up with one side. I don't know. Anyways, yeah, it's it's weird, but it's it's a thing. All right. Uh, so the AI is going to block the spot with the arrowhead. And I will pass. Yeah, I'll pass. So the AI is going to grab the card with the lowest victory point total. And it's the leftmost one. So the watch is gone. Oops. Watch is gone. Okay. Um Next is uh it's going to go discover a site. So we're in round 1. So it's going to be a level 1 site and they're going to get a guardian. And it'll be from the first row, and we're going to go for the rightmost space, I believe, is how we do this. And they still have a worker, so they're going to go here. They're going to get an idol with the tablet. That'll go on their little track. We're going to get a level one site, the site with the jewel. Okay, a site with the jewel. And we get a guardian. It's a snake with a horn. Throw that one there. Okay, and they don't take fear cards or anything. The AI doesn't doesn't care about that stuff. Uh, and then their last one, they're going to go up one on the research track. Uh, the red. They'll discard this token off there. They don't get the benefit. I don't get the benefit. It's just out of the game. Uh, then the top uh, researcher in the tallest pile, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, they're all the tallest, but what you do in this situation... I believe in a tiebreaker is you just flip the stack and but I could be wrong maybe I'm just thinking that in my head but anyways uh, this is what I'm gonna do for my tiebreaker right now until I figured out uh, it's gonna go for the rightmost file and just get rid of this one and it just discards them out of the game it doesn't use them or care about them 
It's just going to keep this cycling, simulating what players would do. Uh, so I might see different things during the game. Is this correct? Okay, okay, that is correct. I thought so. I just didn't read that again today, and I wasn't sure if I was just making that up in my head, but that's how I was doing it. <clears throat> uh, okay, so that's the uh, round one. So we're going to take back our workers. I don't get any fear because I am not out of sight with the Guardian, thanks to your recommendations to kill the Guardians. And they get their workers back. Uh, that's the same. Now we're going to shuffle. So we're going to shuffle their AI stack. We'll shuffle our deck in a sec, or our, um, our play area. Yeah, this, Graham, this game definitely has that theme, that explorer, like Indiana Jones kind of theme, like Robinson Crusoe kind of theme. Um, you know, go into an island, and this you're like archaeologist trying to find the lost ruins of Arnak, uh, which symbolizes you researching up the track. It's just a beautiful looking game. The theme is like, okay, it, I like the theme a lot, but it's not really tied to the game that much. It's just like, it just looks damn pretty though. <laughs> But you don't have that feeling of survival or anything. But you are like, you know, just trying to race for points. Uh, but I do like all the card art and stuff. It does give those good vibes of, of the theme. And we'll put it here. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the game is, I guess you guys mentioning, uh, this game is kind of hard to find right now. It, uh, I don't know if they expected the demand to be so high. Uh, but like I showed yesterday, this game, uh, which I should have mentioned at the start of this stream. I keep assuming everyone was watching yesterday's stream also, but it's not. So I gotta pretend like that never happened. Uh, let's see here. So uh, let's refresh because maybe it's new stats today. Yeah, look, the game just jumped five spots since last night's stream on the overall ranking list out of all, however many board games on this website. Let's see if we can find that number. Uh, there is a way to see here somewhere, or there used to be. Browse all board games, maybe. Oh, there's the page number, but there there used to be a way. There used to be a drop down on the older website. They've changed it recently, but there used to be a way. Maybe from the games page. No. Oh. Yeah, I wish it showed out of how many board games. Because before it used to be like 90,000 and something. So I'm sure it's over like 100,000 games. Probably around there. Uh, and this is 315 overall. And the game's only been out for uh, like three months. And in some places like around here only like two months. So that's kind of nuts that people only like learned about this game last August and the game was still in playtesting form and everything and people started getting their copies like I'm assuming like Essen time frame uh, later November, December of 2020 and not everyone can even get a copy who wants a copy. So that's kind of scary like I was saying yesterday that this game has shot up to 315 that fast. And I, I if you can go watch yesterday's stream in the two player stream I talk a lot about my reasoning on why I think that is. Uh, but this is why, right here, is why this game is hard to find. It's gone up that high. There's probably some great reviews out there, some great review videos on like the bigger you know sites. And that, is, that has gotten it out there and made people really want it. So you're just gonna have to wait. The problem with games like this, they only print so many on their first print run, they're not sure. And they don't wanna have just a ton of warehouses sitting there. And what happens is they order those print runs months and months, if not a year in advance. And then what happens before then, they show off the game, some reviews go out, uh, the big one is like shut up and sit down. If they do a review of a game and really like it, instantly the game, like people go nuts and just want to buy anything that they say is good. Even though their tastes might not align with yours. Uh, th them just saying, that's why they'll get every game is thrown at them from every publisher because even their ga a game being on their channel is just like great advertising. Uh, so because they've probably reviewed this game or some other channel that has said it's good, that happens after they place the orders for the, the first print run. So now they're scrambling based on all the games selling out and distribution just becoming empty of all copies of the game. And all the, then the great 
word of mouth from the people who've played the game, like even myself, I'm playing it now, telling you I like it. Um, you guys are now looking for it and you're telling me I can't find it anywhere. This is why, this is what happened. So now they're trying to get a second print run printed, but during COVID and shipping container scarcity and all that kind of stuff, you might have to wait like two, three, maybe even four months, six months before another shipment, another print run is actually, you know, hitting the shores of your country. Um, so yeah, so, so that's what I find with board games is I wait a lot. I don't, I don't go for Kickstarters. I wait till they hit retail. And sometimes if you don't grab that first run on the retail, you just got to wait, you know, uh, a month, a couple weeks or whatever till another print run comes. Or maybe your store just didn't ask for enough. And then when they went to ask for their second order, they're all gone by then. They, they fell behind the curve. Supply and demand, supply and demand. Uh, the game's reasonably priced. Like the value in the game, I feel, is pretty good. Uh, so I don't know what the MSRP is, but we can probably see that on, I don't know if we can see it on the Czech Games Edition website. No, they don't show that. Maybe it's short in the press. Oh, right here. So the MSRP for the game is $60 US or 60 euros. Yeah, it just came out in quarter four, 2020. I thought so. In both Europe and US. U the US and Europe. I, I, I don't know why Canada or other countries aren't there, but sure. Here's your sales sheet. <laughs> Explore jungles, find artifacts, and discover the lost runes of Arnak. I love the, reading these because it like basically makes the game sound like it's going to change your life usually. Um, and then you just get it in some cards, dice, and a, and a cardboard board. And you're like, okay, cool. I'm placing workers and rolling dice. Awesome. <laughs> uh, oh, the weight of the game, five and a half pounds. Yes, it's an okay weight for how much cardboard's in it. <laughs> if you're worried about where how it fits on your game shelf, there you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, you didn't miss the whole playthrough, Dale. We we're just getting, you know, answering questions in the chat as we go. We just ended round one. We just ended round one. We drew our cards. What else do we got to do? No, we're shuffling. We're shuffling. We're shuffling, and we're putting cards on the bottom of our deck. And then we're refreshing our assistants. And then we're exiling cards. Get out of here. Sliding, whoops, sliding this way. And here's our two artifacts. Okay, so the AI goes first. No, wait, we gotta get our cards. One, two, three, four, five. And here's what we drew. Hot air balloon, gold pan. A little, bit of, a little bit of gold, a little bit of compass. Okay, uh, now we're going to do the AI. The crown is awesome. Like awesome art or like an awesome ability. So you can move a guardian. Oh yeah, I saw this yesterday at the end of the playthrough. I wish I saw it earlier because I'm a player who likes to sit there with guardians and not care about them and take fear cards and deal with it. But this would have made you be able to move a guardian from an, a site you occupy to an unoccupied like uh, campsite or a level one big site uh, with no guardian. And then you get to activate the site. So it's like you don't have to deal with the guardians. You can just, you know, toss them to the side, which is cool. And they go down here, which is neat. So like it, you definitely can mess with the other players. So if you see a player is constantly like Mel last night kept going for arrowheads, for example. So you could throw a guardian down there and just mess with them right it has to be unoccupied so you got to know that they want to go there but if you don't care about a certain resource i, I think i like that card it's very clever <laughs> okay so the ai speaking of defeating guardians uh they don't have any workers on the board so they, they don't defeat any guardian where they have a worker so they're just going to move up the research track okay back to us our turn No, yeah, Bob's saying there are a few copies available on eBay if you're desperate. You should never be desperate for a board game. 
Yeah, there's other games you can play that even have the similar mechanics and stuff. And this game will be reprinted. So, yeah, I'd support your local game store and just buy through them. Um, unless the eBay is like a cheaper used copy and someone played it and it maybe wasn't for them. And then, you know, you can buy it used off them. As long as they're not charging you like, you know, full price or higher than. But what happens nowadays usually is people buy up things that are in scarcity and then just try to make a buck off them. Which is kind of sad. Oh, it's 20,000 ranked games. But there is 130,000 not ranked games on BGG. Keith, I did not know that. That is cool. But even so, out of... Like, that's a huge number. Like, 150,000 games in the database. And I assume that doesn't count expansions. I would assume those don't count, but if it's just base games, even in 20,000 to be in a couple months, be in the 300s. Oh, 100,000, 100,000. Oh, okay. So 100, yeah, there's roughly 120,000 games in the database is what Keith's saying. That's crazy. Oh, man. <laughs> that's cool, that's cool. So yeah, that just tells you something. All right, uh, what are we doing on our turn? Are we exiling to go discover a site? Like, I never know where to start. Like, I feel like using this to just get gold uh, is the play here. But then again, do we want to, like, use this? Like, the two boats? I, I feel not because we don't have, like, enough compasses. So this... We can discover a level one site with this for basically like free because we have a discount of three compasses. I like to use cards like this to start discovering level two, but because we got it so early, I feel like that's not the play. We just burn it to get something from here going. Oh, we got a new subscriber. Fabio, thank you so much for subscribing. I appreciate it. Thank you for the support. Oh, some games have multiple listings. Oh, okay, okay. But even like ranked games, if you're just talking out of like 20,000 plus games, if that's all the like good ranked and great ranked games and even some of the okay ranked games, if you're fighting against 20,000 games and you've shot up to 300 that quickly, like people are that excited they're going in and rent rating it, unless CGE just has like a large employee workforce and they have all their, and it wouldn't be hard to do I'm sure, get all of their family and friends you know, spam email to everyone's families and friends, grandparents, making fake accounts and going on BGG. You never know. It's it's possible to do stuff like that, I'm sure. Um, and not to mention their fan base, right? You just, you know, they you probably can go in the CGE groups and see them telling their fans, you know, make sure you go over there and rate it. And that's what you should do as a board game publisher. You should be telling your fan base. If you have fans in your Discord and stuff, like we see Chip Theory does it, I'm in their Discord. And they ask their fans a lot of the time, help get too many bones higher up in the top 100, you know, go on over there and rate it. And that's what it helps. So if you have a game you really love, go on BGG, add it to your collection, and rate it. And that'll help keep your game in print. That'll help keep it shooting up the list. That'll help get it expansions made. Uh, that'll help get awareness for your game out there. And it'll sell better, so... Oh, Hans has an update here. According to CGE website, reprints will arrive in stores in Europe throughout February. US follow shortly after that. Okay, good to know. So they already have the print, second print run done and it's on the way basically. That's good to know. That's good to know. It's on their website. That is great. Okay, uh, so should I should I fire off the hot air balloon? Is that just like the way to roll? Or should I use it later? I feel like just let's get rid of it, right? Or the long-term play, we have like, we have a way to get three gold on this turn. Do we want to try to get money going to maybe get this airplane quicker? Like, if we're going the route of discovering sites and killing uh, guardians, 
That airplane, I think, is huge. But we have to, like, get four gold and buy that thing. And if the AI is going to block this two gold spot. But again, we could discover a site that gives us gold right here, right? Right? I think, I think that's what, what we do. Oh, Jordan, you brought up... Okay, I'm taking a side, side break again here. Uh, it is game-related, but... Um, I was going to ask that. I forgot to mention that at the start of the stream. So Jordan's mentioning, for solo players of this, uh, they have... Where is it? Uh, in here, in, in the webpage, they have a solo campaign. And it's solo campaign coming soon, but you can download it for free, and you can print the cards. So they, I guess they have their own tablets or cards. You obviously would print these on paper, but they have some new ones. I, I don't know what the difference is here. And then they have, uh, where is it? They have an Arnax Solo Mini Expansion that has the new components, has some cards, some setup. I, I don't know this is different. This is different than what I'm playing. Uh, but then they have a campaign there that's going to come out soon. So yeah, find out what happened to Professor Kutil and his team. Sign up for the expedition. Be notified about its launch. We will send you an email once the solo campaign is out. So yeah, that's coming. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Does anyone know if that's going to be a physical thing or just more printed files? Does anyone know if they're going to actually release like a physical expansion in retail that I can buy? Because I'd really like that. I'd really like the, to have the, the solo ta uh, tiles or, or even cards. Even cards, but... I just don't have a color printer and I'd have to go through a service and make sure it's it's aligned correctly and stuff. <clears throat> plane boss, the plane. <laughs> use the balloon now? Okay. Uh, so we're going to use the balloon. We're going to use the hot air balloon. And we're going to exile it. Okay. We get to get a free airplane. So we can place a worker. I say we go for this gold spot. We're going to get this uh, idol, which will gain us a gold. And we're going to see a new level one site. So two compasses, or we can take an item for a gold less. Oh man, what should we do? We could, we could get the airplane. Oh, we can't right now, right? Because we need... Hmm. Yeah, never mind. We get the discount, but we only have one gold. Oh, I can for a free action, they'll do this, right? At any time. I feel like you can do this any time in this game, even interrupt. Even interrupt. So we can buy the airplane for a discount. So I'll generate two gold, and then we'll use the discount. Or should I just get the two compasses? Probably just get the two compasses, because I have this gold too, right? Yeah, let's just do that. Let's just get all the gold. Doesn't really matter. Anyways, we'll take two compasses off this card. Those are free actions, so whatever. Uh, then we'll get a guardian. Oh, we need two boots and a compass to get rid of this uh, ant army down here. I have one boot, and you can use a cart. I have ways to get compasses. Yeah, okay. Or I can use this boat off here. I can use this boat off here, which is good. So yeah, we can get rid of this guy. We can get rid of this guy. Okay, let's see what the AI's got going on. Uh, so we get, uh, we're in round two. So we're going to just uh, have the AI discover a level one site. And it's going to be the leftmost of the first row. So it goes here, takes this away. It's a compass. Uh, we get a level one site. This is now in the game. Uh, and no guardian. No guardian. All right, it's our turn. I'm going to just deal with the guardian, I think. Oh, no, I should buy the airplane, right? Just in case. 
Yeah, let's buy the airplane for four. And this will go to the bottom of our deck. Uh, slide these over. And it's an all stretch. Draw a card, and then you can place a worker with a discount of a car. Cool. All right, AI. Uh, they're going to cover the compass spot. Uh, this spot. They actually, oh, the highest one is here, actually. So they cover this spot right here. Okay, so it's the highest spot with the compass on it. Done. So uh, Pontus is asking, not Guardians on all locations? No. Uh, so what it's trying to simulate is if I'm playing a four-player game with four other players or even one or two other players, sometimes players defeat Guardians on their turn, sometimes they don't. So it's trying to symbolize that, uh, you know, sometimes they'll leave the Guardian on the site like I do, sometimes they'll, they'll defeat every Guardian. But this way it just kind of randomizes it. So at the end of a round, you, you sometimes have Guardians left is what it's trying to say, but sometimes you don't. So it's just trying to simulate how a real game would play out from your point of view, like, you know, leaving Guardians out. That's all. If I explain that right, I don't know. Uh, anyways. Um, you could also buy the crown, move the Guardian. Oh, yes, true. The crown costs four, though. Crown costs four. Uh, kill those guardians, he's discovering them for you. Go to the compass spot first. Oh, yes, okay. Let's try to go to the compass spot. Yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. Oh, but they're going to the compass spot. Oh, they went up here. Oh, we can go to this one, yeah, yeah. Let's just go to this one. Uh, so we're going to spend a, a boot. Hmm. Do we want to be moving the Guardian? Or do we want to just kill this Guardian? I mean, moving him is not bad either. That does, so boot plus Guardian plus compass for Guardian. An exile fear. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, I like that. We'll just go with that, I think, right? Um, thing is, if the kill a guardian card becomes before research, or else they get rid of the guardian that round if they discard the one. Yeah, I need to travel to do that, so I would lose this fear. You can draw with idle if needed. All true. So what am I doing? I go advance the research track. Mm. I would need this. I want to get an assistant. That would be nice. Don't waste the worker. Okay. So let's just defeat the guardian, I think, right? So to do that, or is it the AI? Oh yeah, sorry. The AI is going here. Right? AI went there. Oh no, they didn't. They didn't. That was me shuffling the cards, right? Did I mess that up? Yeah. They already went. What's us? I'm getting confused. <laughs> uh, all right. The artifact does get two points. But moving this guy doesn't help us in any way. I, th I think we defeat this guy. But if there's a way, like I'm trying to think of a way to get uh, an assistant if we got an arrowhead. So like if we got an arrowhead, 
Then I can move this and get an assistant. Then we're down to, we only need one compass to defeat the guardian. And that assistant, if we get, if we get one of the assistants that gives us a travel symbol, that will help us defeat this guy. Beat the guardian and draw with the idol. And place using drawn card. Okay. Okay. All right, so we'll defeat the guardian. We need a boot and we're going to do a boot and a car and a compass. Guardian's defeated. Oh no, you know what we do? We don't spend this compass. We flip this boat, I think. Let's just flip that boat. And then we'll take this and then we'll use this right away and exile a fear. And we still have a card in hand. I I I don't I don't really want to use this idol that way if possible. But I mean but I guess either way, we could use that boat on here to travel with. Your boat, let's compass on board. Okay. Uh, all right. And now the AI. So they're going to block this spot. Uh, it's back to us. Now. Hard to travel now. Yeah. Okay. And then we travel to where, though? Uh, we need to get the blue arrowhead, right? That's what we want to do. I wish we could have gone to this one, or this one even. But of course the AI is a bunch of jerks. I feel like we go here, and we get a blue arrowhead. This way we can try to get an assistant, I think, is the play. Or... Yeah, I think that's the play. Okay, um, the AI. Uh, lowest point artifact on the right. And the other artifact we got is the Pathfinder Staff. You could relocate a worker to a campsite or a primary site and activate it. Oh, oh, I like that. But we need four compasses. I don't see that happening. Would have taken two compasses. Okay. I mean, we could do that. So with the plane next round, you travel. Oh, yes, we have the plane. I, you're thinking ahead better than I am. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, get ready for the next round, right? Because I, I might not draw all the compasses I need. I keep thinking, like, I'm going to see a couple in the cards, but that is not the case always, especially as I keep adding cards. Yeah, good call, good call. And play them for the next round. We could still grab an assist. Like, these assistants aren't the greatest. But an assistant would help us get compasses. And a gold. No, it would just get us an assistant. Mm. Yeah, I think maybe going for the assistant might be better because that can generate us a, a compass this round and a compass next round. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with what what my original thought was. Uh because we can generate compasses. We'll grab one of these two. So now I think it's our turn, right? We're gonna and a tablet and a arrowhead to go here, and that'll get us an assistant. Uh, boats or cars? Boats or cars? <laughs> what's the one? Is the boats the play? I guess you kind of look at what's on the board, right? Uh, we have some card exiling and gold for the boats, and some upgrading for the boats. And for the cars, we have. Um, Unexhausting an assistant, compass, we have exiling in another compass. I feel like we go for compasses, so I feel like we want this half. Boats uncovered most. Isn't it equal amount uncovered? Yeah, it's a draw. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> uh, can you have the double boats? Oh, car, you have the double boats. Okay. Car because we've built up boats already, like off gold pan. Okay. Yeah, that works. That works. I was thinking the car just for the compasses. If we're going that whole plane route and, and discovering, it seems like a good way to fuel that engine. So we'll just take the free action here and get the compass before we forget, before the end of the round. Okay. Uh, the AI is going to go. 
and block the high spot with a tablet. Um, we're going to pass, right? Yeah, we're going to pass and we'll just finish up the AI. They grab the rightmost lowest point item. So they take the ostrich out of play, throw it in their point pile. Cover up gold location. Cover up the arrowhead. There is none. And they do a little researching and it will be the leftmost spot getting this card draw tile out of the game. All right. So we return workers, no fear for me, no fear for the AI, obviously. They don't care about that. But so many options, like I love, I love the, the plays, like you could go whichever way and that's part of the randomness from the decks and the tokens and stuff. It's like, you never know, you never know. Like you guys telling me take car, but like if the AI discovers a site for a boat, like who knows what would have come out of the, the tiles, right? Like what order? So it's like, you can't fully plan like to go a certain way. It's kind of neat. You just kind of go with what, what's, what the game's presenting to you. Populate item. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we'll get there, we'll get there. So the item is the donkey. The donkey. Okay, and then let's get rid of it. And here's our new artifacts, the cleansing cauldron. Card draw on an exile, and we have the war mask. Get you a blue arrowhead, and you don't gain fear from guardians this round. See, that's a card I would like, the way my play style is with this game so far. Not today's playthrough, but generally, I, I kind of just ignore guardians a little bit. Uh, that would kind of help with that strategy, if you saw that early. Okay, uh, what else we got to do? We refill the card row, refresh assistance, and we need to shuffle these. Did I really exile two cards? Oh yeah, I did, I did. I exiled the hot air balloon. Like, I only have three cards, that's weird. Oh, did I forget to exile the assistant? Yes, I did, I did. This guy gets exiled. Yeah, I forgot about that symbol on the card. I was playing too quick there. Uh, so this guy's out of the game. So that reveals the upgrading one. Great if you got some tablets or blue arrowheads uh, with your engine generating. You can turn into jewels. That's good. Uh, so I draw one, two, three, four, five. Shuffle that right. Yeah, so we drew the airplane. Okay. All right, first player. He's gonna cover this spot. Highest jewel. Okay, it's our turn. Let's discover a site. The discount of two, and we get an airplane. Okay, we can place a worker with a discount. If you're discovering a new site, you also have a discount of two compasses. Okay, so anywhere we want. Again, the upgrades don't really help us unless we go generate something first. Uh, like a tablet or an arrowhead. We could go to the tablet spot here. Or we can go to one of these arrowhead spots first. Um, Okay, um, yeah, where do we want to discover? Arrow, then kill that open guardian. Oh, okay. The guardian, though, uh, we can't go here to, to actually kill him. You need to have a worker there, which they have a worker, so we can't do it, right? So they blocked us again on that. So we have to make our own guardian. 
Oh, we could, yeah, we could try to go to a level two site with a two discount. We have, we, we need two more uh, compasses. We can generate one here and we can generate one here. So let's, let's do that. Let's, let's go for the higher ones. Yeah, and guardians are obviously from only one pile. So same difficulty as Mark saying in the chat. That's a good call. So we'll generate a compass. We'll generate a compass, offer our assistant. That's the four. And then our main action, those are both free actions. So our main action, uh, we're gonna get a discount of two compasses. So we'll spend all four. We're gonna go to the level two. I never know when the best time to do that kind of stuff is. Um, but uh, we get a plane. So we need, we need to choose a boat or a car. We, we can choose either. Choose either. Uh, so do we want a compass? Do we want to exile a card? We would get rid of this fear out of hand. Do we want another gold? Or do we want to exile? <laughs> and yeah, it only gives us one plane, so we're spending whichever one we need. I don't know, whatever we need. Doesn't matter. We got both covered, so we could just choose one. I feel like getting a gold and then maybe we can afford this hat. Yeah, the exiles immediate. I'm I'm thinking for the gold to get a little greedy and get another card going here. Um What do we need for the research? But then we don't know we don't know what the guardian's going to throw at us. Compass says Scott. Yeah, okay. Okay. Compass is good. We'll go. So we got to get rid of a car. And we're going to go here to take a compass and another idol. Whoops. Compass. Okay, we got a compass. And we're going to get a level two sight, an arrowhead, and a jewel. And the guardian is a scorpion. Card draw on that one. We just gotta toss a card out of hand without doing its effect, a compass and an arrow. We're covered. We have all the things. We have all the things. What is it? The Pathfinder staff's OP, he was saying? Let's see. Oh yeah, I agree, I agree. But it's like we're going a different route here, so spending compasses on that, we could have, and then maybe we would have just done a level one site. We could have gone here. I mean, can we get it? Can we? We could get a compass from here. We can get two compasses from here if we're quick. I mean, they might take that spot right now. Find out. Let's find out. Oh! <laughs> they, <laughs> stupid AI. I mean, smart AI. The AI knows, they know. I start talking about a location and they they somehow manipulate their deck and they cover it up. Oh, but actually it goes here. Actually it goes here. Okay, we're not totally locked out. It goes to this one. We still have this spot too. Yeah, yeah, never mind. <laughs> In my head I was like, man, it's going to take the compasses away. But that's only like early round. The AI knows, they heard me say. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't fit. All right. Uh, <laughs> okay. So let's, it doesn't, I don't know. I'm thinking of the guardian and then we draw a card. Kill the guardian, draw a card. Yeah, let's kill the guardian. Unless we're really worried about grabbing compasses. I do like this idea of relocating. That is super cool. But we could draw into our other compass card. And that we have one, we maybe have two. And then we place our worker. We have options for our worker. We know those will be open. So yeah, we don't care. Let's, uh, let's defeat the guardian. So we're gonna use this fear as our card we're tossing. Oh yeah, we won't have enough compasses, I don't think. But that's okay, let's just do it anyway. All right, so we kill this guy, boom. And I think we'll just draw the card right now. 
All right, we'll draw the card. Ah, it's a compass. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so AI is going to go up the research track and discard this guy. Right. <laughs> hey, Sajat. <laughs> All right. Um, can we get this card, the Pathfinder Staff? Can we do it? So I have a compass here. We could place a worker, get two more compasses. Then we'd have to use one of these idols. Then we would have a guard to possibly, uh, a gold, sorry, a coin to buy a hat. I think if there's also a way to do some researching, get another assistant. Travel with the boat to two compasses, get free compass, and then idle for compass. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Exactly what I was thinking. Um, use an idle to get the cough compass. It's going to net you more than two points. One round, second round, buy artifact. Oh, yeah, buy artifact. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's do that. Compass. Reaction, compass and a gold, okay. Uh, we're going to use the boat. Get two compasses. Get four compasses, a gold and a jewel. AI, I'll block a spot with a tablet. Okay. And then we're going to buy the artifact for four Pathfinder staff. And we get to do the effect right away without spending a tablet for the cost. So re relocate a placed worker to one of these lower sites or one of these level one sites. What do we do? Um, can I get enough gold to get the, the card draw donkey? If I relocate to here, I get two gold. I have one gold here. I don't think so. I don't, I don't want to do another idol, but I mean, that would be cool. Gold in the arrowhead here. All right, I'm down. Yeah, okay, okay. Coin plus arrowhead. Yeah, getting arrowhead is like rare, right? So I should take advantage. Okay. Um, oh man, they would have covered that arrowhead if I didn't do that. That's funny. All right, I pass. No, no, I don't pass. I'm buying a card. Or... Hmm... I need a tablet to move up my research, but we can wait on that. Yeah, I want to get this book up here to get another assistant. And I could if I used idols, but I, like, I, I don't really want to do that. The other artifact. Oh, <laughs> oh man, the war club. We can kill guardians. But we're not at a place with a guardian, right? So... That goes with our theme. Idle equals two tablets and gets you an assistant net. Yeah, that's true. Ah, I should do it, eh? <laughs> Does the X on the coin mean you can grab an item without a coin cost at the first location? Uh, this one? Uh, it just means you get a reduction of one gold, I believe. Uh, let's see, is it on here? Uh, yeah, right here. So you may immediately buy an item or artifact from the card row with the indicated discount. So I assume it's just like, oh no, right here. Oh, you completely don't pay its cost. I thought it was minus one gold. Oh, 
I thought it was minus one gold. Oh, we should have done that earlier. I could have bought the whole airplane for free. Oh. That sucks. Well, I learned something new. <laughs> I just thought you ignore one coin. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, do I have one extra gold? I don't know if I have. No, no, I should. I should have all the gold, and I should trade back two compasses to get back the four gold I spent on that damn airplane. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. But I learned. Thank you for teaching me that. <laughs> yeah, I just thought that's what that one did. I haven't seen the one that's like a negative gold though. I don't think I've seen that symbol on a card yet, but I'm, I'm obviously it's in the game. Maybe it's on one of these guys. Oh, anyways, all right, next game. Yeah, yeah, next game. <laughs> all right, uh, what are we doing? We were gonna buy. So, so when I relocated the guy here, would I have just done that? And then we get like the donkey for free? Assistance hat. Use the compasses. Assistance hat. Yeah, assistance negative cost. So if we use the idle, we can generate two tablets. We can then research here. And then with the jewel, we can move the book up, get a gold, and then get another assistant. I think that's the play. Yeah, it was good to get the assistant. I know, I'm just saying. It's an option. I didn't realize even understood what the card did. But yeah, that's good that we know now. Good that we know. All right. So I think before the cards go away, I feel like, because uh, we could get a gold eventually from this, he's not going to take away, I think if there's a way we can get the four gold for this. So we have two, we can get a third here, and we could get one here. I don't know if that's the right play. No, I think we're just going to go for the hat. Uh, I do like the donkey though. The card draw on the donkey is huge. Brush is good. You like the brush? Oh yeah, true. That would give us three compasses. We already have the idols needed. Okay, let's just do the brush. I never buy the brush. Let's let's just try something different. I'm all about trying different things. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's do both. Okay. Uh, so what we're gonna do is uh, research, right? Oh no, we're gonna do the idol. Get the two tablets. Yeah, that's free action. Now we're gonna research uh, tablet and arrowhead. We gotta move our magnifying glass up first. We can't move our journal up that quick uh we got to make sure the magnifying glass moves up first then we go to the ai they're going to go for the lowest and rightmost point card so the donkey is gone so that tells me that yep yeah, the donkey wouldn't have been mine anyway i don't know why the camera wants to not focus so yeah donkey sorry donkey and let's see what card comes out it is the army knife Oh, I like that one. Maybe we get that instead of the brush? I don't know. I like the flexibility of that knife though. Very flexible card. Uh, okay, um, so now we're gonna spend a red jewel and we're gonna move the book up. That's gonna get us a coin off this little token. So three gold. Uh, throw away the jewel. 
And then we get an assistant. Which assistant? Free compass for research. Oh, I forgot that. I forgot that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, so we have, we have the upgrade one where you can turn tablets into arrowheads or arrowheads into jewels. Okay. We have the turn a gold into an arrowhead, which is nice. And I mean, this one I think is good for, for shooting up the research track. Uh, just gain some, like a tablet. But I don't know. Center assistant. Got wants a tablet. Yeah, I really think the center or the right one is the way to go. Tablets are scarce on the board. Yeah, okay. That's true. Yeah, with no tablets like on any of these uh, dig sites, it means this one, the AI grabs that pretty quick, I feel. Or can grab it pretty quick, and it might be hard for me to plan around it. But the arrow assistant is being recommended. You can always move an assistant for net plus one tablet. What does that mean? Moving an assistant. I don't know what that means. I, I, you can move assistants? Yeah, Mark, I'm not, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, with my artifact. Oh, move one of the workers, right? Like this thing, if, if I use the artifact. Relocate a placed worker. Is, does this have to be your worker though? Or can it be any worker? I feel like it's your own, right? But if you can do anybody's worker, that's interesting. Yeah, I have to have it in hand too. That's the other thing. I kind of have quite a few cards. Um, no, yeah, I'm going for tablets, I think. Tablets are the way to go. Because arrowheads, we have options, right? We have a site here, we have a site here, we have this site here, we have a site down here. But tablets, it, like I could be blocked out of like first turn if the AI flips it. I feel like going this way. I feel like going this way. Oh, it's clarified clear, in the back? Okay. You are correct. What is that one called? Pathfinder Staff. Yeah, it says Pathfinder Sandals and Pathfinder Staff. Your archaeologist can be relocated from any site. The effect only restricts to the type of sites it can relocate to, not from. Okay, that's be yours. That makes sense. Yeah, there's only one tablet here, yeah, and no tablets out here. We got kind of unlucky. But that's okay, just you gotta, you gotta adjust. Uh, so we can just do a free action and gain that tablet right now. You might as well. Okay, so that's our research. The AI is going to uh, go to the highest place with the gold down here. Okay, we have no cards. We have this idol. We have three gold, a compass, two tablets. I feel like we buy one of these cards. The brush is three victory points for the end of the game, and it gets us three compasses every time we play it. But again, we're already at the end pretty much of round three. We just got round four and five left. The army knife, it's flexible. It has a boat or a car, and then you can choose two different options. We can exile, we can gain a gold or a compass or a tablet. So again, another way to get tablets. Scott's voting for the brush. Any other arguments to to either one? We, we could still all just get the hat also. 
and see what else comes out. Maybe a two cost card comes out that we could go for. Rush is good for exploring, which we have been doing. That's our theme. Yep, more exploring equals more math. <laughs> yes, all right. So the brush, I'm convinced. Let's go for the brush. Uh, so we'll spend three gold. And this will go on the bottom of the deck. So we'll have that next turn because it's literally the second card down. Double this over. Binoculars activate any. Oh. Okay. So you can just go to the site and activate it, or you activate it without going to it. Let's find out. It doesn't say place your worker first. I feel like you just flip it over. You get the effect. Binoculars. Don't see that clarified in the back. You just activate it without going to it. Oh, that's cool. Do you get the rewards from it though, from flipping it? I assume you do. Because it's part of activating it, just getting the rewards. Yeah, this is the thing. I'm seeing like new cards that we've never dealt with before. This is neat. No travel. But does the dog not say to activate it though? I want to see activating. Oh, it probably says right on. Okay, activate a site tile. Oh, activate a site. When you activate a site, you use the site's effect. You do not need an archaeologist there. Oh, you're not discovering, you're just activating. I get it. Activating is just placing the workers, getting the reward, but you don't have to place the worker. I'm getting, I was confusing activating with discovering. You're not discovering, you're just going to a site that's already active. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, my terminology with this game is not all the way there for sure. Yeah. The activating is just gaining the rewards from an already available worker site. And in this case, it's just a level one. So one of these. I can just say, I want a compass and an arrowhead, or I want just a red jewel, or I want two compasses. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Dan says his prediction is a score. Game 67, Rob 62. That's cool. All right. Uh, what do we do? We bought a card. And the AI is going to defeat a guardian. Okay, so this is his first guardian. Uh, it will not research because it was able to defeat a guardian. Add a space where it had a worker. Okay, our turn. We have two tablets and a compass. I don't think that's really doing anything for us. We need an arrowhead to move up the research track. I mean, we could get an arrowhead with this, but uh, uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay, uh, we'll pass and we'll let the AI finish it out here. Uh, lowest point artifact uh, and it's leftmost. Oh, no work club for us, no work club. <laughs> Ritual dagger, exile and an arrow. And last is, uh, we're in round three. So the AI is going to activate, I guess this site only here. Take this and get a guardian. So it's the fear, compass, and jewel. And the guardian is a big owl. Oh, there's, okay, there's some tablets needed. <laughs> That's a lot of tablets. Oh, wow. Yeah, free card if we activated this one. That'd be cool. We should try for those binoculars, or is it kind of too late in the game? I don't know. We can't get it right now, though. Uh, but we'll see. Okay, so let's take our workers back. No fear on our side. Okay. 
Okay, let's shuffle the AI. Lowest, not highest. They were all one point though. Did I say highest? I meant lowest. But they were all one point artifacts, right? Like the War Club is one, the War Mask is one, the Cleansing Cauldron is one. So they're all tied. And then it just takes the lowest, then it was, uh, whatever it was, uh, the leftmost, I think. Yeah, my bad. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Round four. Artifacts, Sacred Drum. You can toss away a card, ready up your two assistants. And the Obsidian Earring. Draw up to two cards from the bottom of your deck, keep one, and just discard the other. Uh, let's refresh our assistance. Anything else? Do we do it all? Brian, I like the AI for the game. I like just how simple and straightforward it is. And it does feel like another player's playing or a couple of their players and they're blocking sites you want to go to. Just like standard. It's very standard worker placement or deck building AI where they're taking cards from the row, cycling things through their blocking spots. You know, they're leaving Guardians behind. They're racing up the track. Yeah. All right, so we got the airplane back. We got the brush, of course. In a ton of compasses. You can get three compasses from the brush. We have exploration for another compass. We have a uh, assistant that gets us a compass to help us with the plane. So. We get a two discount for uh, sites. We need four compasses. Oh, we already have, yeah, we have enough with just the brush and then we can fly with the airplane. Uh, and then we just need, I mean, we could just use the car from the uh, assistant and we can go here and that will exile, but I don't have a fear to exile. So, I mean, we could just exile uh, one of our regular cards, whatever, that doesn't get us victory points. Or for a boat, which we could just toss this boat and use the plane off the airplane to go to either get a gold. Uh, I guess the gold would be what we choose. Okay, so that's our plan. Let's see what the AI is going to do here, though. Uh, they're going to take the lowest point card on the left, this one. Army knife is gone. Wide over binoculars. And there's the dog. Oh, this one, yeah, is activate an unoccupied site. I get it. And it's only the, the bottom row ones, right? I get it. I get it. Okay. So. We hit up a level two site, right? Is that the plan? Okay. So let's play the brush as our action. To gain three compasses. One compass for each idol you have up to three. So we have four idols, we're good. We're exploring, Scott, right? Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, so that's us, now the AI. They're gonna block the highest spot with an arrow. Oh, oh that would've been a good one, actually. Now, should we have just tried to shoot for that right away, now that I'm thinking about it? We don't, what do we need, two cars? I mean, we could have went there with this, right? Yeah, some of these things I don't think like about the AI gonna block it, uh, which maybe that would be in a hot spot. I never really like plan ahead enough to go like, what resources do I need to fly up this track here? I should do that more, but it's okay. Plane and brush and car from assistant, okay. A 
But is it okay to just exile? <laughs> hey, Velko. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, so let's do the airplane. Uh, it gives us a plane. If we use a car from our assistant, we have to pick this one that exiles. Uh, I don't know what I'm exiling. I guess I could play like this one first to get a gold or something and then exile this. Play them and exile them from the discard. Yeah. Don't exile good cards. Yeah, but they're not that good. These are just like the basic starting cards. They're just junk. I bought better junk. I want to see the other cards. Well, then in that case, I need to go here to get a gold then. I need a boat. Yes, fast action exile. Okay. Okay, let's do the gold. So we'll get a gold. Okay. And then we're going to... The assistant for a car. Okay, so we have a car. We have a plane off here. And we're going here. And we'll take these two idols. And we'll exile this funding. Okay. And let's see what we get here. Level two site. Oops. That's cool. Two tablets and a jewel. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Man, we got, we're loaded on the tablets. We got four now. Woo. Okay, Guardian. Whoa, look at this guy. So a car and a arrowhead. <laughs> uh, car. I don't have an arrowhead. So the AI wants to defeat a guardian at a space it's at. Doesn't exist. So it's going to go up the right side here and get rid of this exile token. Uh, rather just junk. Bought better junk. Consumerism at its best. Yes. <laughs> a four compasses discounted to um, compasses. Bird guardian, please. Oh, is that an easier one? Oh, if I go here, oh, it's fear. Yeah, I could get rid of this guardian because I have enough tablets for it. Like, should I be racing up this track, though? I feel like I should, should do that. That's, like, the name of the game. But I'm having fun kind of just doing this stuff. I don't know if it'll be enough. Oh, I did forget. You're right. You're right. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. I forgot to pay the compasses. Yes, you are correct. You are correct. Yeah, I didn't get that far. We were just getting excited about Guardians. Corrected. All right. Uh, now what? Do I just travel and... What do I do here? I feel like I just go grab an arrowhead and we take care of this guy. But I also want an arrowhead to go up and research. Then we have tablet and jewel. Then we need a gold and a jewel. Yeah, I don't know. Need arrowhead, grab arrowhead with car. 
Okay. Arrowhead and compass or arrowhead and gold? I think arrowhead and compass. Arrowhead and compass. I would have loved arrowhead and jewel, but I was snoozing on the uh, on the trigger there. Well, they're gonna research leftmost. An assistant. This one's gone. Okay. Don't have the boat. Oh, did I not? Oh, I see. I toss a cart. You're right. You're right. Gold and arrowhead. Gold. I see. I see. Yeah, I toss a car, not a boat. I mean, I could use this boat, but I don't know. That might be silly too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh. Just take. Two gold is a free action. Um, I feel like buying binoculars is my action. Or I research, get a compass. No, I, I, I think, don't buy yet? You think to wait for better? Like, did they already take an, a card? Oh yeah, they took a card. I don't need to rush on, the, on that. I don't need to rush on that. They already took a card. No, he already cleared though, so that's all I get to buy from. I don't think I'll get card draw effects that I see. I don't have to worry about putting it in the deck or anything. Well, we're going to take a tablet as a free action also. Why not? And... Um... Yeah, let's just do a research. Oh no, we needed to get rid of this guy. We need to get rid of this guy. Is that what we're doing? Oh, well, we don't have the car to do it. Yeah, we left a guardian. Hmm. Hmm. All right, or should I not get the gold? Should I not get the gold? And we just use the boat to get uh boat equal we oh no we can't use the boat. We never mind, we can't use a boat. It's we need an airplane or we need uh a car. Yeah, we need a Jeep. Ah, I forgot about the killing. Is there a way we can get that? No. That's okay. That's okay. We'll just roll with it. We'll just roll with it. Uh, so we're just gonna research, I guess. And we get a compass. Okay, AI. Uh, the lowest point artifact, right side, a one, the war mask. Gone, shuffle these over. The runes of the dead. Yeah, research twice, I know. Oh, it does not, <laughs> you know, I know, I know. Research, uh, so let's just use a tablet and a jewel. And that'll get us another tablet back. And another compass. AI. Gonna block highest spot with a tablet. Uh, three tablets, two compasses, and four gold. I feel like buying the binoculars. I really want to buy the binoculars. I think they're fun. Other than that... Can't research anymore, we need a jewel. I know I could do this to get that jewel, but I don't, I don't really care right now. Oh yeah, two gold is any travel icon. I totally forgot about that. Ah, yeah, I forgot. The two gold, we can get an airplane. Ah, yep, yeah, I failed. Forgot about that rule. I don't think I've ever done that, actually. I know it's a rule, but I just never never do it, so I just didn't, didn't remember it. 
All right, let's get some binoculars. Arrowhead with the idol. You want me to do it? Is it that good? Prevents us getting a fear card. So it negates the fear card and gets us five points and we lose four. So that's good, right? Two gold plus idol gets you frog. Okay. Let's go here, get the uh, arrowhead and then we'll spend two gold. And there we get rid of the frog. Yeah, yeah, we had a way out. We had a way out. Uh, and he's worth a boat later. <laughs> he's worth a boat. Compass. Uh, here. Okay. I think we're done, right? I think that's all I have for now. I don't have a way to move up here. I could have done it here if with that arrowhead, but I think defeating him, that's kind of our, our play we're going with. We're just having some fun killing some, some guardians. But I think I passed. I'm pretty sure I don't have anything left to do. I, I don't have enough compasses or artifacts. I'll get arrowheads and research. I don't have enough gold for cards, so yep. Uh, see, I was gonna cover here. And we're gonna discover we're in round four. So a level two site, uh, the rightmost one. Gold, compass, tablet, arrowhead. That's a good one. Oh, no, 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 we don't do a guardian. We don't do a guardian. Yeah, yeah, let me shuffle these so I didn't, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. All right. I didn't see that. Okay. Uh, so we're good. They just, they just discovered a level two site. And then we're going to, not that it matters, over that. Okay, get the workers back. Okay. Travel their first next round. Right here? <laughs> Gold, compass, tablet, air yeah, we want the arrowhead, right? And like that's obviously the best arrowhead spot. Unless we want a jewel. Unless we want a jewel. We gotta see what travel we have. We need cars and boats, so we have a car here, we have a boat here. Uh binoculars only work on level one though. Binoculars only work on level one. There might be an item that does level two. But for four gold, I don't see, like, I don't think there's any cards that cost more than four, is there? One, two, three, four, five. I wish I bought those binoculars, but I did not, unfortunately. No, no worries, Scott, no worries, no worries. Okay, um, so we're going to, binoculars are gone now. Sliding this over, we're in the final round. We're finding a decorated horn. Change one of your assistants available with one on the supply board. The new one is at the same level and refreshed. And mortar, which you can exile a card and get a couple gold. And that decorated horn is cheap. Cheap. We could use a we use one of these and then grab one of those. Could be a tricky play for two compasses. Uh, all right, 
What do we get for cards? Got a gold pan, a fear, exploration, pathfinder staff, and a gold. Nothing to draw cards, man. The good stuff's all in there. The good stuff's all in there. Let's see. AI uh, is doing nothing on round five for that card. All right, what do we want to do? Two boat card for top spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that makes sense. Uh, or we could use a single boat card. Single boat card. And then we use our guardian for a boat. I feel like that's the play, right? I don't, I, like, we don't need to use this for that yet. I feel like I want to use the guardian, but then we, it means we have to use this, which might be okay. Do I care about a compass or two gold? What's more important right now? Compass, probably. I mean, we have ways of getting compasses as we shoot up the track here. No, use the double boat. Read the full comment, trust me. Okay. Two boat card for top spot, then boat from guardian for gem. Two boat card for top spot, then guardian. Boat from Guardian for the gem. Oh, right here, right here. Boat for the gem. Okay, I get it, I get it. Then Artifact Move. Artifact Move. That's this, the Pathfinder Staff. The Compass to buy Artifacts. Okay, okay, I gotcha. I'll go over that road, that makes sense. Okay, we did buy the gold pan for the two boats. Let's, let's put it to use, I guess. We talked about that was the long-term plan. <laughs> okay, so we're going here. I'm assuming this spot, or am I going for these things? What am I, what am I, what's my priority? Am I shooting up this track? Is that what I should be doing? If so, is this the right one? Or should I be going, I mean, like it's double boats, I understand, but I do have a way to do it with cars, so we could go for gems, arrowheads, and stuff. Yeah, so anyways, we'll just go with that, but I'm just like, I don't know, like these, these look really good too. Uh, but we do need, we need a jewel. Then, I don't know, an uh, arrowhead, I guess. Then we, I guess arrowhead. Then we need a jewel again. So we still need two jewels somehow. We got a jewel here we're going to get. Hmm. Jewel arrow next. Yeah, go for this. Okay, we'll try. We'll try. I mean, the guy might take it though, right? Okay, so let's get finished getting our stuff here. Uh, what I say? Did I get the gold already? I don't think so. I had two gold at the end of last round. Gold tablet and an arrowhead. Okay. Done. All right. That's all spent. We paid our actions, everything. I think we did. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, so AI. Oh, 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 the AI knows. They know. Top arrow spot. The AI always knows. They know. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, so next, we are going to use this boat. Or, yeah, let's just use this boat and go here to get a jewel. Research with book, then you'll get to flip assistant to gold side. Hmm, I see what you're saying. But use first, then you will upgrade to refresh your assistant. But what do I want to get with my assistant? Do I want to use the compass assistant or the tablet assistant? I would assume the compass, but then it just gets me a gold and another compass. I do love the whole upgrading. I always try to do that, move the book up uh, to get the two double uses and flip. I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome. Okay, so we went here, we got a jewel, and we spent this boat. Okay, 
Yeah. Uh, so they're going to cover the compass. Highest compass spot right here, unfortunately. Man. All right. Our turn. So we're talking about relocating. We can relocate to one of the bottom spots or a level one site. And what are we trying to do? Like, I feel like going up this track is important. We have a jewel to get the magnifying glass. I'm thinking magnifying glass, like trying to get to this top spot here, if it's possible. So we have the jewel and the gold. This is covered. We'll gain a compass. Then we have two tablets and an arrowhead. We get to draw a card. That could lead to discovering this last site, possibly. Uh, we don't have the boat for it, though. But we, we might draw into something that can help us. Because we could draw into the plane, right? If we draw into the plane, there's a chance I think we'll have enough compasses and stuff to explore. Move to here. You want me to go here instead with the boat? And then we fight this guy? And we have a plane? We still get a jewel. We'll get a compass and a fear card. Yeah? Oh, keep the tablets? So you get guardian points too. Okay, we can do this one instead. So this would be a fear we get. And a compass. Yeah, and we can take care of the guardian, right? Okay, I like that. So is that what we're doing right now? Three, three tablets? I don't know, let's just do it. All right, this guy's toast, we have an airplane. Okay, AI. I took a gem already, because remember I took it from this one? I took a gem already. All right, uh, now they're gonna grab this cart. Dog is gone. Fishing rod. A little too late. I get it. I, I haven't used this yet, though. I haven't used this yet. That, that was just me undoing my turn. Or you're saying that's what I should do th with this. I thought I was just correcting it. Oh, okay. You guys are staying with this, right? Gotcha. So that's a tablet. So we'll just we'll just correct it. We'll say that's what we're doing right now. Okay, so we relocated and then we'll do another AI turn. I get it. And we get another gem. I get it what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I thought you meant do that first. Yeah, so we'll just correct. It's okay, it's okay. Uh so they're moving up. Oh, and they got to 23 points first. They beat us. Uh and they're gonna discard this uh research assistant. And then Then we do the Guardian, then they'll go again, right? Yeah. And then they'll cover the top spot with gold right here. Okay, our turn. So we went twice on the AI just because I did the whole defeat a Guardian, play a card. I, yeah, just, I did two turns like back to back kind of thing. But if they would have taken that spot, then that would have made sense. Now we just go up the track, right? Uh huh. So, gold and a gem. Boom. We get a compass. Okay. They will go. They block a tablet spot. Boom. Okay. Now we need to get up to here. Or here. We don't have the tablets. So, that kind of answers that, right? Oh, yeah, we can't discover that because we use this guy. Yeah, 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 never mind. Never mind. Okay. Uh, so we're going to do a gem and a compass. Go here. Oh, but then we don't have the tablet to get by here. We need a tablet here. We're kind of just blocked, right? 
Use assistance. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, I see. So this upgrade we're just going to pass on, right? Or, or we take a tablet first, and then we can upgrade it if we want, or upgrade the arrowhead. No, I think we're fine here. It's just the jewel to get past the last part. But we're going to draw a card, right? Yeah, go to gem side, draw a card. Got the brush. Okay, the AI is going to cover this spot. Here, compass, or sorry, tablet, gold, and arrowhead. Get us another compass. We have five compasses. Uh, we have a two cost, or a two point card here. Oh, that'll draw two cards from our deck. Hmm. Yeah, this could be fun. You get to go up, your assistant or talent. I'm trying to think of a way, like buying an artifact to kind of get us a gem somehow. Uh, now get compasses and artifacts. Yeah, but I'm trying to think of like these, this artifact, like how can we, like man, I got loads of compasses. One, two, three for my idols. AI. Oh, I guess I should have bought cards first. <laughs> so the leftmost lowest point card, so mortar is here. Oh, card draw. Okay, card draw for two. That's interesting. How many cards do I have left? I have two cards in my deck. So I could draw two cards from the bottom of my deck, keep one, and throw the other into play for four. What do I have here? Five. I have nine compasses. Ten, technically. Looking for victory points this is literally only. This. I should take this one just because we're two victory points, right? By the card draw artifact. Some artifacts give resources, others good on points. Yeah, they're all one pointers except for this two one. By the one that gives tablets, gives me a fear card. I'm hoping maybe I buy like a cheap one first and we see a new card. And maybe we can just keep buying cheap ones to eventually find one that gets a jewel somehow. Like if we can find a jewel, we can we can go up on this track, and that would earn us. Uh, what would that earn us? An extra five, uh, five points. By the one that goes to Talus, the horn gets you net two points. So this would exchange one of your um, assistants with one available on the supply board. So I grab a silver one and it would be refreshed. Horn gets rid of a fear. What are we? Is there one that gives us a gem though? Yeah, I'm buying the cheap artifact. Let's go cheap. Let's go cheap. I'm, I'm going for the stone jar for two. Okay, goes right in play, draws a card. Hey, okay, we get this. Great. Next. Ancient wine. Use the effect on the gold side of one uh, assistant available on the supply board. So we have compass and exile. We have a discount of one, is it? 
Oh, discount of two gold on an item or discount of two compasses on an artifact. And then we have uh, two gold or two planes. <laughs> uh, all right. So the AI does its last action. Uh, guardian, no guardians. Then it wants to research. I just need to know what does it get here? I forget what it does. I've never had it hit the top so uh, and still have something else to do. If your rival cannot, here we go. Uh, right here. If your rival cannot advance because they already reached the Lost Temple, give them a six point tile instead. Use the decision arrow to choose the left or right stack if both still have tiles. So it's the left. Why that to activate the minus two compass to buy the other artifact or maybe a new artifact? Yeah, it just gets points that way, right? All right. Well, all that's left in my deck is my plane. Like, it doesn't do anything, so I don't care about drawing cards. All right, so we're going to spend three. Buy the wine, which will get us a goal. There's a two point card here that we can afford now. Okay, and then use the effect on the gold side of one of these guys. So we're going to use the effect of minus two compasses on one of these cards. Oh, we don't have anything to upgrade to a gem, but that would have been sweet if we had a tablet. Well, we have tablets here, I guess. Hmm. Can we afford a seven worth with a minus two? Don't think so. Uh, but we will purchase for a minus two. I feel like we purchased this one. Get a bunch of tablets. Is that a waste, though? What are tablets doing for us? Nothing other than possibly turning to a gem, but we don't have another. Oh, we do have a compass in hand. Oh my God. I forgot about the hand of cards I have. Woo. All right. So let's try that. So let's buy the bones of the dead for a discount of two. And this will get us a fear card to our play area, a gold and three tablets. I ain't scared of fear. Gold and, oh, sorry, three tablets, three tablets. Did I say two? Reveal the top tile of the um, single discovery site ta uh, stack, activate it, then put it on the bottom. Oh, that could get us the gem we need, maybe. That could be the one. But this we know just gets us the gem anyway. <laughs> Let's not gamble. Oh yeah, tablets upgrade to arrowheads, not directly to gems. You're right. And I would only get to do it once. We have a way... No, nothing here. Yeah, that's not the play. It's the random reveal. Maybe we get lucky and we find a gem on this card. Oh wait, it's activating. It's activating. Yeah, yeah. So it's just get whatever's on this and flip it. Roll the dice and do it. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so we're going to buy another card. We'll get uh, a compass, and we'll spend two uh, to buy the gar Guiding Stone, and we'll gamble here. We're going to reveal the top tile here. Yes, look at this. We're going to activate it, so more fear. Why not? Throw it on the bottom. We get a fear card. We get a gem, and what was it, a tablet? Yep, another tablet. Who says there was a shortage on tablets? <laughs> All 
All right, now we're going to research with our last compass here, uh, gold and this jewel. And boom, we just jumped up five points. And we get to look at this. Oh, they should have randomly got rid of one, right? When they went up to the top. So, oh, they're both for compasses. <laughs> so it didn't matter. Boom, we got another compass. Yay. Uh, guiding skull. Hey, a uh, compass to reveal the top tile of the, oh, of the two, the level two stack and activate it. Oh, that's a cool one. But I don't have four compasses. <laughs> buy item. Oh, yes, true. Yeah, yeah, let's buy the two point item. Actually, yeah, sure. We'll just generate a gold and get rid of this one. Fishing rod, bottom of the deck, new item. Oh, it's a one cost item. That works out great. Sturdy boots. So we'll just buy those sturdy boots. Why not? For a victory point. An automobile. Oh, three point automobile. That's cool. We have a fear card left. Uh, one compass. We got four tablets. Oh, no. You know what we should have done? With that last gold. No, no, no. We don't want to buy the one point for a gold. No, we'll just undo that. That's fine. Whatever. Uh, with the gold. And two tablets, we could get a two-point token instead, right? Put the tablets to work. Yeah, that's better, I think. Right, right, right. Uh, I think I'm out of moves. Yep, I think I'm out of moves. Yeah, I got my compass from the tile. Pretty sure. Yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. Yeah, I got a compass from this thing. All right. I item for two points. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. Let's total it up. Let's total it up. So Rob, AI. All right. So let's do the AI first. Um. So we need to. All right, um, position on their magnifying glass. They get 23. And they have a six point token. And idols, they have three, six, nine, 12, and plus two more is 14. And then guardian tiles, they have just one. Cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven points from cards. And they don't do fear, so that's nothing. All right, so then on my side, uh, magnifying glass is at 21, plus book at one, so 22. And then uh, tokens for two. Oh yeah, let's check with the AI. You wanna know the AI score? Uh, 23 plus six, that's 29. Uh, 43, so 43, and then 48, and 59, I believe, 59, I think, that's right. Double check. So 23 plus six is 29. Uh, Plus another 14, 30, 43, 48, 59, right? 59. I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay. Uh, idols on my side. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. Uh, guardians. Oh, boy. Never seen so many in my pile before. Uh, this is 25 worth. So 5 times 25. Or 5 times 5 is 25, I mean. And cards. 
two, five, six, minus one, back to five, four, three, four, five, six, nine, ten, nine, ten. <laughs> I guess my lowest score on the cards. Okay, so I got 24, uh, 34 plus 8, 42, 62, 62, 67, 77? I think it's 77. 22 plus 2 is 24, right? I do another 8. That's 32 out of 10, 42 out of 5, that's 47, 57, 67, 77, right? Boom. Yeah, thank you, Jim, for the Guardian. Uh, that was fun to play different. Like, that was fun. I, when you said go for Guardians, I was like, I, I never really done that before. It's not really my thing. I usually just avoid them. Kill, like, one or two in a game, not really care. But it was fun to try. Like I like in these Euroy type of games with all the, the victory point salad stuff to try going like a different route, heavy in one thing. Then next time I play heavy in another, one time I dabble a little bit in everything just to just to see how balanced the game is, right? Like see how you can get points from doing all different things. Oh yeah, what is your score? Where, let's go back to where, can we see where Mark's original score was? Oh, did I mess up? Is it 79? Twenty-two plus two is twenty-four. Twenty-four plus eighteen. Thirty-four plus eight. Fifty. Sorry, four. Sixty-two here. Sixty-two. No, oh, that's not right. Is it? Did I do it wrong? <laughs> Only one way to find out. Oh, I don't have my phone for calculator. I got the computer. Whatever. Oh yeah, sorry. The 18 is it's it's uh, an 18, not a 10. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this column right here. This column right here. This is our yesterday's game. This is a column right here. Oh, okay. All right, we're good. We're good. We're good. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Yeah, my writing's not the best. I we all know this. We all know this. We're not bragging about our writing. So I need to up the difficulty again. Because when I played the game the first time, uh, solo, I got 66 against the AI was 53. So just giving it two difficulty level wasn't enough. I think. I think we gotta, gotta hammer it. Ah, but that was cool. But I do like being able to go like different ways and try different things. It's kind of fun. Yeah, this game's really cool. Definitely really cool. The solo is straightforward. Like, you saw how quickly you could just fly right through these tiles like yep they grab this card yep they put a worker here yep they grab this card yep they discover a site flip a couple tiles move on like you don't have to even play around with with tokens i like the way you're just like you're not gathering resources for them i think that's super smart keeps the game flowing and you can kind of focus on your resources and focus on your play and i like that you don't have to kind of memorize a whole complex ai because when i'm playing solo and especially streaming at the same time Streaming, interacting with chat, plus managing a higher complexity AI, like for example, Scythe, trying to memorize all the freaking rules formulas on how they move. Yeah, yeah, not a fan. Uh, just like straightforward, simplified AI. Oh, Kazumi said, once you know what to do, the AI is relatively simple, hence the mini expansion. Ah, uh, okay, so mini expansion also ups the solo difficulty too. That's good to know. Oh, Dan, you're looking for the uh, the additional board? Uh, I don't think my game came with that board. I, I'm not sure what you're talking about. I, I'm not sure, Dan. I think I uh, I think I didn't get that board. <laughs> this board? I will put this thing in a paper shredder if you keep bringing it up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, all right. <laughs> the purple AI is super difficult, though. Oh, okay. And where did I get the plastic token bins? These are Geekbox. 
Geekbox. Somebody asked about these in the Discord earlier today. That's funny. Uh, I can probably bring it up in two seconds. I just buy them from my local game store, but I feel there's a few game stores that have it. But you can find more info about where they're carried. They're just these. I use these. I've been buying these for years to just pad orders from my local retailers to get free shipping, especially during COVID. Uh, cause they're only like $3 a box, like $3 for a pack of three or something like that. So you get a pack of three, they come with lids. I usually don't use the lids. I just use them on the table to kind of keep things clean, but you can use them to store your games. They have a snap on lid. Um, they're just bigger versions, similar to the Stonemeyer ones that come in wingspan and scythe and stuff. Uh, but yeah, they're just, they're bigger. They're definitely bigger. They hold more tokens. They're, they're taller. Um, but yeah, you can check them out here, find more details. But these are what I use. Yeah, they were the only thing available at my local game store I ordered from a lot, so I just started buying them. Uh, but they're definitely cheaper than the game trays ones. They don't look as fancy, but they're just so straightforward and they just work. And I like the way they're clear. So even if you're sitting and playing at a big table, we have a bigger game table, uh, like a bigger table we play games on, and we go to some other people's houses, and when everyone's kind of spread far apart, if you have a uh, non-see-through containers holding everything, or like plano boxes that are not see-through or something, um, I like the way these are clear, so from all sides. From all sides, no matter where you're sitting, you can see what, what is what. So even if you're like a shorter person kind of reaching across the table, you like know what you're grabbing out of what containers. I just like how it's like, they, they're, they don't take away from the, the presentation of the game because they're just like kind of in the background. I like that a lot. I don't know if I'm explaining it right, but... With ones that are like, you know, black or, you know, blue or orange and stuff. Those kind of pop more. They look nice, but this kind of just keeps them like muted in the background. But I do want to get some Game Trays ones eventually and try some of the ones that are like divided and stuff. Um, to hold when there's like games that have like less tokens. So that way I take up less table space. But they're expensive to ship to Canada, so. Yeah. Yeah, different options. Yeah, this game is cool. Lots of options. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. It's cool. Very, very cool game. Very straightforward. Uh, it's fun. Rulebook's well done. Gameplay's tight. They obviously did their playtesting. Well, I'm all for that. I'm all for that. Yeah, that's Solo Arnak. And like we said before, uh, there is an additional print-and-play solo add-on mode to change things up. You can print out the cards. Uh, and eventually there's a campaign coming. Eventually there's a solo campaign coming. So maybe you'll see that on the channel. Uh, yeah. It, when that comes out. We'll see. I just have to be able to print those components. Because I only have a black and white printer. So I have to figure that out. But if anyone watching this later or if after the stream's over. If you know of a good Canadian place to print cards and stuff. Uh, that's not like there's US ones, but then they ship and across the border and extra charges and all that. But I don't know where, if there's any Canadians watching, where are you printing your like print and play cards and stuff? I'd love to know. I'd love to know a Canadian friendly, shipping friendly kind of place. Yeah, Mark, I like this game a lot. I like this game a lot. Uh, this was my second solo playthrough. And only my fourth playthrough of the game. I'm still like seeing cards I've never seen before. I still don't know what I'm looking for in the deck, Mark. As you probably could tell when you're describing things. And I'm like getting a little confused at like, what are you talking about? Activate this or what artifact am I looking for? Because I'm not familiar with all the cards in this game or anything. I'm still kind of fresh to this. But this game is going to hit my table a lot over the next year, I think. Especially when COVID restrictions lift. There is a bunch of gamers we play with uh, in our family and friend group and stuff that play games. And I know they're going to love this game. I, I want to play it four player. Uh, that's when it goes up to, right? Four player. I want to play this at four player count. I want to play this with our daughter at three player count. Uh, we can do that. But I definitely want to take this game on the road, go to some people's houses, and show this game off. Because I think a lot of the, the uh, friends that I play with, they don't really go for the most complex games, which is good. But they like the meaty strategy replayable games, like the, the Euro-y kind of games. They like confrontation, even though this doesn't have a lot of it. But they don't mind that. So I'm not, I'm not worried that, you know, someone's going to get pissed that they put a worker uh, on a place. Like, this game's still kind of fun. Three player is best. Four player takes a long time. I'm not worried about playtime, though. The people that we play games with, like, we go there and we play literally for an entire day into the night, sometimes till two in the morning. 
So I'm not worried about play length of this game. It's still a very short game, especially at solo and two player. This game seems way shorter than I expected it to be. Those five rounds fly. And once players kind of know what you're doing, I can see this game flying around the table real quick as people just do one action at a time. And I like that, I, I don't mind the, the if the, the full play time is extended, I just love the downtime in this is so minimal. Like the other player literally decides on one main action and maybe, yeah, maybe they do some free actions, generate a gold, get a, get a compass, but you're done your turn so fast. So I can picture, and even in a four player game, it's gonna get around the table really quick, which I like. And in, you, you don't really need the time to plan your next turn because it's like worker placement and deck building. So I find in those games, even if you have a game plan next turn, by the time three other players have bought cards and taken up worker spots, your plan has to kind of change on the fly anyway. So I don't know, but I like it so far at solo and two player. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jim, my daughter never really plays on stream. She's like, yeah, she's kind of doing her own thing now, just playing video games with friends a lot and stuff. Um, but yeah, I got to get her playing board games more often again. But she's grown into a, a teenager soon, so she's all doing her own thing. You know, you know how it is. Parents aren't cool anymore. Uh... <laughs> Bob, if I still worked in IT... Uh, I was with the printing department, uh, at not my last job, the job before that I was in so tight with the, uh, when I worked, you know, in an office environment, there's the whole room, the printers at the back, like I could get anything printed. I could have like laminated color booklets. I could have stuff printed on thick stock stuff with like professional looking, you know, they, they have like printers there that they use to print, um, like shareholder documents and stuff that like holy like looks so professional so good like such high quality uh and yeah because i'd help them fix computers and and stuff like that they would always kind of like yeah do yeah go whatever you need whatever you want <laughs> a little donation to charity yeah we'll print the, your your stuff you need for home no problem uh we don't have kinkos but we have we have printer places um i don't know i usually go to staples but they're not the greatest. I don't know. I usually go just go to Staples. <laughs> oh man. I'm surprised they don't have a neoprene board for this. Do they have that? I'm surprised they don't. Yeah, we have a Staples nearby, but because of COVID lockdowns, it's closed right now. Like it's it's curbside pickup only. So I can't like go in and, and print it myself or like go in and describe them like what I need. I think you can only do it like online through the website and then they like mail it to me right now. So I'm kind of waiting for that. Oh, you're a Xerox service engineer for 30 years. Never paid a penny for printing or bookmaking. Oh man, that's cool. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, I see some of these cool books people are making for like Arkham Horror the card game. And I look, it looks really nice. Like putting all the rules into like novels and stuff. It's, it's really cool. They don't have neoprene? Damn. <laughs> you guys are funny. You guys are funny. Anyways, that was the solo mode of Lost Runes of Arnak. Uh, that was fun playing with you guys, making decisions, figuring things out as we played. You guys taught me stuff about the game. We figured out that symbol for getting a card for free. My mind is blown because I would have totally taken advantage of that right off the bat if I knew that. And now I've learned, so that's good. That's going to help me play the game more correct going forward. Um... Uh, <laughs> if it was a neoprene board you couldn't shred the part that holds the cards ah i would assume that would be a separate board printed on neoprene like there'd be two neoprene parts <laughs> dan says the chat gets a gold star for behaving today by the way yeah they're less aggressive towards me when i'm not competing against mel <laughs> uh, if theory bought up all the neoprene uh i don't know about that i feel there's other companies using neoprene <laughs> but yeah, lately, they might have bought up the, the, the world's supply. So Arkham Horror is next. That is scheduled for Saturday. So tomorrow, uh, today I'm actually, I started building the decks. Uh, I'm going to look a little closer at which one I want to use, but Mel has already decided on hers. Uh, so most likely later today or sometime tomorrow, you're going to see uh, in the video description for the next stream, I'm going to put in the decks we're playing with. Uh, and you can check those out, or you'll see them when we... Uh, at the beginning of the live stream, we'll talk about which one we chose. We'll look at them in ArkhamDB. 
uh, and look at Kate's Kate's recommendations and stuff. Um, but I'm going to be building those today. Hopefully, we're tomorrow, uh, not on stream tomorrow. We're going to play some Arkham Horror or tonight uh, to practice it a little bit, just to get back into it, try out the new decks, make sure we're familiar with the cards, what we're looking for in the deck and stuff. Uh, but that is on Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern, I believe. We're starting Arkham Horror, the Dunwich Legacy. So come and join us for that. On Sunday, we are jumping back into Sword and Sorcery. We're starting with the uh, uh, Vastorus's, however you say that, Vastarius's Lair. Um, so we're, we're going to start that leg of the campaign. And then on Monday, uh, we, we're off in Canada. It's a holiday. It's family day. So it's a long weekend for us. We're going to be playing uh, Cthulhu Death May Die, Episode 3. And now that Mel has painted Haster, we're going to play with Haster. All the, all the, the characters are painted everything. So we got a fully painted Cthulhu Death May Die set. So we're going to be starting to play that again on the channel uh, a little bit here and there to, to play through all the episodes at least. Uh, so that's all this weekend. The next Arkham Horror after that is next Thursday. We're going to do something where we do one Arkham Horror on the weekend and, and most weeks one Arkham Horror on the weeknights. Uh, I know that doesn't work for everyone's time zones and stuff and we're sorry, but it would just take a very long time to play through the cycle if we didn't play at least twice a week. So we're going to try that for a bit. One on the weekend, one stream on the weeknights for Arkham Horror. And we'll do a few days in between so it gives people a chance in the comments to recommend how we spend experience and deck upgrades and changes and stuff. Uh, if you guys want to get involved in that. Yep, Cthulhu Death May Die equals Family Day. Um, but that may change. The Cthulhu Death May Die stream may change based on how the Sword and Sorcery goes the day before. If it's like a really long mission like that one expansion and it's just taking forever, we might pause it, leave it on the table and just uh, stream that the next day and then bump the Cthulhu Death May Die till the next weekend or something. I, yeah, I read I read all of Bob's feedback and, and I looked I looked at the original deck you paint, uh, posted, Kate. Then I read Bob's feedback. Then I looked at your new deck you posted, uh, the new versions, and kind of saw what you guys were talking about, what you changed. And I read your descriptions. I was a little confused. Uh, the description in one of the decks talked about newspaper was in the deck and stuff, and it wasn't in the list. But then I saw Bob had recommended take it out or something, and you changed it. So it made made sense to me after I realized what changes you guys had done to the decks. So what I'm going to do is copy those decks, clone the two that we pick, over to my account. I'll publish them so that people can see them and follow along. And we can... Kate, can we make changes to that, that published deck as we upgrade experience? Or do we have to like publish a new version of the deck with the upgrade changes? I don't know how ArkhamDB handles it. Because I've never done it for Arkham Horror yet. I don't know if that feature is built in or not, but... Um, yeah. He said, just ordered 10 three packs. Thanks, Rob. What are you, what three packs? What are you talking about? <laughs> Jack says, have you read the rule book that comes with the Dunwich yet? No, I haven't. But I saw that there is two scenarios to start with based on some choice. Yes, you can upgrade with XP on ArkhamDB. And it's, it, it's still the same deck, Kate, like still the same deck link. So like people can just follow along. Oh, you bought the geek boxes. Okay, Keith, I got it. I got it. I got what you're saying. <laughs> that Man, that was so long ago. <laughs> uh, okay. Pretty sure, Bob says, pretty sure you can upgrade the deck in ArkhamDB and save it as a new version. Cool. Okay, okay. Mel said, I think she picked the version 2 one. I think she picked version 2. <laughs> yeah, so Jack, I've left, I've left the first Arkham Horror uh, stream as just episode 1. So we can make that decision together at the start. Uh, on stream, I figured we'll do it. So I'll kind of look at both options and make sure I have all the cards ready for the stream. And then you guys can, uh, we'll do like a poll. We'll do like a quick straw poll in the chat. So if you're there at the beginning, uh, we'll just go with whatever decision you guys choose. Unless there's some heavy prep I need to do ahead of time and we should pick that beforehand. 
Oh, okay, perfect, Kate. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, that works. That works still too. That works still too. Okay, I'll just post a new link to the deck. Okay, that's fine. I just want to wait so people can follow along the the evolution of the decks, depending on where they are in the streams. And yeah, that's that's cool. All right, I'm gonna get out of here so I can go build some decks and uh, get ready to jump into the Arkham Horror World and leave the Lost Ruins of Arnak World uh, and switch my focus over to that. And also read up on some sword and sorcery, get refreshed back into that to prepare for the weekend, see what's new in the new expansion. Uh, but yeah, lots more playthroughs coming on the channel. Thank you everyone for following along. If you want to support us on Patreon, there's a link down in the video description. If you're looking for the solo play or the uh, two player playthrough of Lost Ruins of Arnak, there's also a video uh, link down in the video description to a playlist. And if you're looking for future playthroughs on the channel of Lost Ruins of Arnak, if you're watching this way in the future, any of that stuff will be down in that playlist. So check that out. Uh, if you're interested in any of the playthroughs, hit the playlist section up at youtube.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. And thank you all for watching, and we'll see you on Saturday. Bye-bye.